I actually have to pick it up. It's not it's not an optional thing. The game actually in about three minutes uh, will not let me advance until I actually go and get the crack bat. So that just turns out to be the best time to get it. Uh, we just got to hit a couple of uh, yeah, first little go first little meteor. sequence here. Um, a little story of a meteor has crashed outside. Uh, Ness has got to wake up. He's going to go investigate the issue. And like Sky said, you won't be able to actually leave the house uh, until you get that crack bat and equip it. So we just do it right away there as you walk by the room. Yeah, so the, fir the first trigger is to uh, go up here, talk with uh, Porky Minch, uh, the uh, son of the older son of the family who lives next door. Just go through his dialogue real quick. And uh, at that point, we're just going to go ahead and uh, head back, talk to Ness's mom, and we'll advance the plot. Yeah, just a lot of uh, storyline advancement in the, in the first few minutes here is, is typical in, of the RPG. Yeah. We're gonna to talk to mom here. There'll be some bangs on the door, a little ruckus, and uh, we're gonna head into kind of the first, first little uh, RNG area of the run. The first of many. No spawns many, or many anything have been areas. turned on yet, but they will be now, and uh, we'll kind of see uh, what we're dealing with out and on it. Yeah, the whole first town is a major RNG area. Yeah, the entirety of on it is uh, pretty rough. The game throws a lot at you right away. Yeah, it just doesn't give us enough resources to really deal with the challenges until we get later into the game. Yeah, we're at, because we're at such a low level, it's it's tough to deal with all the initial fights that, you know, as usual in, in an RPG speed. Mom walked away from me there to... Uh... Even even casually speed run anything uh, on it is a tough area to deal with. Um, doesn't matter your skill in the game if you're fresh to it or speed running it. This this place is tough, so um, I'm sure we'll see some good. Yeah, get Tracy blocked. We we'll talk to Porky. He's gonna temporarily join us for our party for about four minutes if we're good. Uh, if we're not so good, it'll be like five and a half minutes. Talk to the telephone, talk to our dad, and tell us that he can, we can call our dad to save our game. So we're going to kind of get a view of uh, kind of the, the various enemy types here in the game. The, yeah, that's, mechanically, that's all... the game kind of throws us some, some interesting things. That's going to be a respawn. Yeah, so you see this guy's using a, a despawn technique there. He'll just respawn the door and get something else when he's out. Uh, various enemies here. You have the dog, the crow, and the snake. Uh, they all have different movement patterns. Uh, we're going to see Skies exploit those movement patterns to get himself quickly up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be kind of focusing right now. It's a snake. The snake is going to be swung to the side. Uh, so the dogs will kind of just run straight at you uh, if you ag if you get in their aggro radius. Uh, snakes are what's known as stutterable. We'll be seeing a lot of stutter steps later in the run. And uh, the crows have kind of a left and right swingy pattern that you can, if, if you know what they're doing, you can kind of just walk right. Uh, those crows actually also have a chance to not aggro you, uh, depending on your level. They'll try to run away from you. Yeah, that's, that's something that will definitely come up later on. Uh, especially in the second half of the run where we have to do some backtracking, there'll be uh, some enemies that are just going to run from us. Uh, one of the mechanics in this game, if you are enough higher level than the enemies uh, in the area, or cert when certain event triggers are flagged, such as uh, defeating a Sanctuary boss and a couple of other things, uh, enemies will run from you, so they'll, they will actively try to avoid a fight with you. Uh, right now, everything, you know, nesting level one, uh, they're going to all aggro us, so we don't get to take advantage of that just yet, but later on we'll be able to. Yeah, there's various things that go into whether or not an enemy aggros you, and you know, we'll, we'll be seeing whether or not they'll be running or heading towards us later in the run, especially in Mole Cave, you'll see a lot of that. 
yeah, the, the ducks in Mole Cave, um, the plants in Milky Well, those are kind of the two big ones that we have to be mindful yeah, of whether they're going to run or not. So we've got the bread roll here. Uh, the reason we grab it now is because if we grab it earlier, uh, the crows have a chance to steal an item from you. And if you happen to get in a fight with a crow, it can happen. Uh, you don't want that bread roll to be stolen. Yeah, the other reason is sometimes during the walk, I'll have to go down there and despawn uh, an enemy. If I have to go and de despawn an enemy, I'll pick up the bread roll then. Uh, that's just another reason why we don't pick, yeah, it we don't be want a pain. to pick up the first trip up. Despawn enemy. So we got, uh, this is basically a glorified cutscene battle. We just have to wait for Buzz Buzz to uh, kill Starman Jr. This could take either four, six, eight, or potentially ten turns. Hope you, six is going to be the most common number of turns. Uh, Starman Jr. always uh, puts up a side shield every odd turn, so turns one, three, five, uh, and, and attacks on the even turns. So we got we got a charge forward for 120. That's pretty good. That bodes well towards getting the four turn fight, which is pretty much the best fight that you can get. I don't think it's possible. I don't think there's any situation where you can beat him in three turns. No, I don't think so. Uh, so this is the first of a few scripted fights in the game. There, there's various right. scripted and uh, somewhat scripted fights. Uh, this this fight is fully scripted. That was a, a great fight. Yeah, great that was a really here. good fight. I mean, it could have gone it could have gone a little bit better, but uh, any time you get a two cycle, that's really good. Yeah, so we refer to the cycles uh, in that fight as whenever Buzz Buzz attacks. That's that's one cycle. Uh, because it's scripted, it'll run through cycles, uh, and you want those buzz buzz attacks to happen in two cycles. Uh, it can happen more commonly in three, uh, less commonly in four cycles. But two is very very. Yeah, I'd say I'd say two cycle happens one in eight times, and I'd say maybe six and eight to get a uh, three cycle. That that seems to be more or less what I what my uh, findings have been. Somewhere between one and six and one and eight to get a two cycle. Now we have some more dialogue. Buzz Buzz is going to pass away. So I press after pay respects this time. And he's going to give us the sound stone, which uh, is supposed to help us get the melodies of the uh, sanctuaries. But I don't think it actually serves any purpose. Like if you, yeah, using glitches, if you don't have the sound stone, you can still do stuff. Make sure to say, no, we don't want to hear this story again. And with that... So now we're kind of heading out into the outskirts of Onnit. Um, we're going to be heading into the drugstore, pick up a couple items. Uh, well, and then we're going to be heading head towards to, Frank. Uh, uh, these these first few fights out. can be a little tricky. Nice block with the dog. Always good to use, uh, you know, the obstacles around you to kind of get yourself in between an, an enemy. And here we're seeing a little bit of the stutter stepping. Uh, we'll be seeing a lot more of that in Giant Step. We'll, we can kind of explain more uh, of how that. Yeah, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go up here, pick up the Mr. Baseball cap. Um, we're gonna immediately be selling it, but it sells for 100 bucks, 99 bucks. This is a little, a little uh, up trade in the game, a little trick in the speed run where um, the Mr. Baseball cap actually sells for $99. It uh, doesn't really give you much more defense than a regular cap, so what we'll do is uh, sell a Mr. Baseball cap to get ourselves a better item yeah. um, and just get a different hat that is only one less deep. So that, that allows us to get a fairly strong defensive item relatively early in, in the in on it. We're gonna buy the T all so see it in the shopping seat. Points of offense. Uh, we're gonna get the, the baseball cap, which lowers our defense by one. It gives us 99 bucks when we sell the Mr. Baseball cap. And that allows us to get the cheap bracelet, which gives us another five points of defense. So we've got uh, pretty much all the best equipment we can have in uh, in Onet right now, right off the bat. So we're gonna take this kind of path behind the hospital. This avoids some spawns, uh, some spawn triggers on the way to the arcade. We're gonna talk, talk to this guy, we're gonna fight him. 
This guy, this guy is actually reasonably tricky. If he charges forward every turn, he can kill you. Yeah, you can definitely die to this fight uh, if he charges forward too much. Alright, he's got uh, 35 health, so there we go. I'm take him out. And... So just kind of sort of grinding, not really grinding, but just gaining some levels here before Frank. Um, and these enemies will always drop a hamburger as well. So we're kind of picking up some burgers, getting some experience and getting ourselves ready for an upcoming boss. There we go. Typically you're pretty safe for this fight at this point. 45 health is pretty... Yeah, second Pogo Punk is not nearly as threatening as the first one is. Yeah. Right, one more guy to fight. This, yeah, guy this is... fight is just kind of, we have to get through it to get through the door. Yep. Nothing too crazy, this guy only hits for... Hey, we got the unnecessary smash. You gotta love the crit when it's at the, at the end of the... Now I got Frank, and this is the first uh, big RNG hurdle. This guy can definitely kill you. Like, even if you do everything yeah. right, like, completely safely. Yeah, this is a boss fight that can start. That's what we're looking here. We're basically alternating uh, bash heal, bash heal, because Frank can, as you can see, hit pretty hard uh, for over half your health. Uh, yeah. So the if idea is you just kind of hit, like heal, hit, heal, hit, heal, hit, heal, hit, heal, and he's being... Yeah, Frank was brandishing a lot of knives there. That was... Yeah, many knives. Usually he has some there. dead turns where he'll, he'll, you know, lower your guts. No. Yeah, this is uh, Frankie Stein Mark II. Frankie Stein also operates on a pattern. He will always do a... Uh, on odd turns, he always wastes them building up steam. Uh, the first even turn, turn two, he will always do his weak attack, which is uh, to throw a punch. Um, and then every even turn after that, he can uh, either throw a punch or uh, tear into you. Yeah, another another scripted fight here. Uh, we know pretty much what's going to happen. Like Sky said, every other turn he won't do anything. In that first turn, we know what's going to happen. So this is if you run the game pretty pretty well, you know that this fight what's going to happen. You can take care of it pretty easily. Plan ahead. And, uh, it's not too. Yeah, this this fight this sequence didn't go very great. I uh, had to eat all my hamburgers. Yeah, that that Frank fight was pretty tough. But luckily you didn't die. It's definitely common to die to Frank there. He just, he'll just brandish his knife twice in your... Yeah, all he, needs, all he needs to do is brandish his knife, hit you for like 25, knock you down to 20, 21 health, brandish a knife again, mortal damage, nothing you can do, you're dead. Yeah, nothing you can do, can't mesh. I'll take a free heal here from Frank. Um, restores the psychic points and your health. It's free. So now that we've uh, quickly taken care of the, the local bullies, uh, we're going to head to town hall. Uh, the mayor is going to be quite pleased with our work, and he's going to hand over the key to a uh, shack that's up north that's going to gain us access to the first sanctuary in the game. As much as I would love to skip that first sanctuary, this is one that we actually can't skip. There's two of them, uh, this giant step and rainy circle, that we have to complete along the kind of um, storyline portion of the game. And then most of the other sanctuaries we'll uh, do towards the end of the game as just kind of clean up. But there's there's That's kind the of way the sanctuaries work. There's kind of two two kind of things, two kind of uh, plot events, if you will, going on in sequence. There's kind of the mainline plot advancing through the game, and then there's the sanctuary dungeons that we need to find and complete uh, along the way as well in order to gain access to the end game. Um, and we'll mostly be doing the sanctuary uh, dungeons at the very end of the game. Uh, I'm going to pull out all my money. There's eight sanctuaries total. Um, we have to do them all to get to the end of the game. Uh, like Sky said, there's only two that we have to do, and then the rest we're going to save till the end of the game. Uh, once we're, you know, higher levels, fought a bunch of bosses, got a bunch of really uh, overpowered items, 
uh, the one we'll be finishing off the sanctuary is in, in the end. Uh, but it's it, the first sanctuary and the fourth sanctuary are, are the ones we can't cannot skip uh, glitchless uh, because those two require uh, require the storyline to. I'm just gonna max on burgers. As you can see, there's the snake running from me. But that's the first of many such enemies that will just uh, run and not try to initiate a battle with me. Uh, so we'll be hitting the first and pretty much only huge grinding section of the run here. Um, we're gonna be looking for 22 slugs over the course of Giant Step here. Uh, the idea of the 22 uh, is to hit level 8. What level 8 is going to allow us to have is our first offensive magic uh, AoE attack, which is going to be great for the boss, and it gives us uh, the offense we need and just the, just the general levels to survive the uh, the boss fight in this. Yeah, we just don't have to go to the sanctuaries. In is So there will be several sanctuaries that we'll be notified about that we could do, but we're just not required to actually do those sanctuaries or, until we get to the end of the game. Unfortunately, I got yeah, these guys just skip have, over uh, them all. 30 health and uh, go me. I hit for 29 and I've got minimum defense, so they're hitting me for five, which is pretty much the worst case scenario. Yeah, it's kind of the the worst of of two RNG values here in the stats: low low offense and. Low. But once we hit level six here. Um, those those levels should should uh, hit pretty hey, good. It's a smash. Hey, I'm pretty close. Yeah, we'll definitely be lifing up after this fight. Two points of offense and one point of defense. That'll help. Yeah, get a little get get, get some stats there. Help. Those slugs shouldn't be hitting for five anymore. Now they'll they'll hit for four now. So there's um kind of a first. Well, maybe the second instance. Uh, it's a technique you use quite a bit throughout the run. Uh, it's, it's pivotal for your survival in this. Uh, basically how it works is you can kind of lightly tap the D-pad on certain enemies, and uh, they only aggro you, you on certain frames. So if you can kind of skip those frames a little bit, um, they, they, you can kind of get away and get out of it. That's eight, uh, eight slugs down, uh, 14 more to go. I mean, there's there's number nine. Kind of the odd numbers here with the sink. Uh, so the way the spawns work here, um, they they only spawn the, the enemies only spawn in certain places. Um, there's there's enemies we don't want to fight. These these mice are definitely of them. Uh, there are also antoids that will spawn here. We don't want to fight them at all. Uh, they love to call for help. They love to life themselves up. They just a real to pain. So. For 15 damage of heat, uh, an attack. Yeah, they hit you really hard. Uh, just a fight we don't want to get into. Uh, so they don't spawn actually on this first floor, so we're going to kind of stay down here At least until, until we, we want them. And they do. The sprite for the ants look just like the slugs. They're just little black specks, so it can be very confusing uh, if you don't know. Yeah, but but if we know kind of what what spawns together, so if I see a cluster of, of black black dots, I know that those are going to be slugs. Versus there's a, there's a certain finesse to it of just kind of knowing what's likely to be ants and what's probably slugs. We've got thirteen slugs. Yeah, definitely. You can you can tell by the the pack numbers uh, what's. Antoids typically only spawns in packs of two, whereas slugs will spawn in, spawn in packs of four or six. Okay. That's a, that's almost certainly an antoid. That's going to go ahead yeah. and spawn. Those are probably antoids as well. We're looking for a four pack of little specks here, not. Yep. Or even. I don't need another butterfly. That's a that's a four pack of slugs right there. The classic case of knowing, you know, four of them, we know they're slug. If there were only two, they were definitely antoids. So just knowing, being able to tell the difference between the packs. 
So thankfully with another couple points of offense, we'll very commonly, we should almost never hit for less than 30 now. That's uh, 17. Yeah, usually once you hit level six, you won't be hitting for... Yeah, I've had enough but instances of being level six and hitting for 28 or 29. I am actually going to try to go into this room just to try to go for some. I don't want that, uh, that no spec. Respawn. Yeah. So I'm going to go up to this top floor. On the top floor, there's a chance for it to get a uh, six slug fight, a uh, fight of six slugs, which is going to be right there. That might be five, but that's okay because I got 17. Okay, so that's a six pack. Yeah, so the slugs will only spawn in six on that third floor. You won't see those those six packs on. And this will most certainly uh, give us. So the next thing, so the one thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at my offense. Um, so I hit for 74, that means I have 19 offense, which means I am guaranteed to get a plus 5, plus 6, or plus 7. So I'll have 24 offense. Uh, you can either have 23, 24, 25, or 26 offense at level 8. If you have 24 or higher offense, you will uh, be able to auto-kill a single ant without actually engaging the ant in combat. Just like you saw a couple of times with those single slugs, how I would encounter them and they would just immediately win. So there's offense plus seven, which is actually giving me 26 offense, the maximum possible you can have under any circumstance at level eight. That was a massive offense uh, level. Yeah, the uh, 19 to 20, that's no. the uh, rare, rare but highly valued 19 to 26 offense gain at level, uh, level eight. You have to have min offense and then you go to your maximum possible. Yeah, I think uh, plus seven offense is the most you can get on level yeah, you can only, and you can only get it when you're 19 offense. And we see his fantastic uh, usage of the stutter steps here. Gonna skip all these in. Alright, so now we're gonna fight uh, Titanic Ant Hole. Oh, sorry, I guess I can't say that. Yes, that is, that is PG-13. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, so this fight is definitely uh, can be a run killer. I don't want to jinx it, but it's tough for sure. 107 on in the first rock and on Ant is definitely what I like to see. He's got about 235 health. Yeah, so we're looking for these rockins to roll pretty high. They both roll pretty high. Very high roll. Right. Oh, he's this guy's going to play it safe. He's a burger there. It's very smart to keep your health uh, above 60 here because Ant... And smash a bit for 60. And that's the fight. That was a really good fight. That was a fantastic ant fight. <laughs> yeah, both of those rockets were really much good. Work. One was 7 and 88. So that, that already knocked him down about 40 health and just took two bashes. Yeah, an, an average rock and hit is about 75 to 80. And that yeah. first one hit for 107, which is definitely worth yeah, Rockin' is 80 plus or minus 50%, so the minimum is 40, max is 120, and it also does have a miss chance. It's not too high, it's based on your speed and the enemy's speed. Uh, I, I think for Ant it's about a 6% or so miss chance, but it can happen when it does happen, it really sucks. Yeah, the Rockin' de can definitely miss, and it's it's brutal. It's It can make the fight near impossible. So as you can see, uh, every enemy will automatically run for me, run in a sanctuary once you defeat the sanctuary boss. And uh, a few times in the run, we will definitely take advantage of that fact. Yeah, that'll hold true throughout the run, and it definitely helps out with leaving a lot of the sanctuaries that you don't have to fight everything on the way out as well. Yeah, uh, the big one where it helps out is uh, Rainy Circle, and we have to go back through Rainy Circle to get to Stonehenge. Because all the enemies in there are not particularly pleasant. So we're almost done with that. So we're going to be heading towards the police station now. Um, usually we want to be stocked up pretty well on burgers, but I think that ant fight went so well that you'll be a -O. Yeah, I've got seven burgers. I'm, I'm good with that. And based on my simulation work, once you have more than about six burgers, it doesn't appreciably increase the chances of you surviving the cop fights. Uh, if you die with seven burgers, you're probably dying to a cop smash, not to running out of resources. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, the NPC was blocking the, uh, the truck. 
it's so courteous of him to stop traffic. Yeah. I was going to say, so courteous of the uh, driver not to run the guy over. <laughs> but... He's probably trying to keep himself up. Yeah, you want to avoid that criminal liability there. We're going to kindly uh... ask the uh, chief of police to open the door to Onet for us, and he's going to say, eh, well, come this way. And he's going to stick his, uh, his force on us. And, uh, yeah, come into my back room and I'll open the show you, show you what I think of people like you. So, uh, you want to explain how the cop fights are? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the cop fights, you definitely want to be able to focus on these. Um, so they basically have two movesets. Uh, they're going to crush and chop you, or they're just going to flat out attack you. Uh, crushing chops hit for upwards of 30, which is about a third of our health at this point, so it can be pretty tough. Uh, the general idea with these fights is to keep your health above 60. Um, because they can hit for 30-ish, you don't want to hit, get hit twice and just be dead. Um, yeah, my rule is generally about... So it's just, just RNG. But... It's kind of where I... So 55, I will go ahead and... Generally, generally around 60 is, is where you're in a, in a tough spot. And lots of crush and chop. So you only have to actually fight four of these cops. Um, there's five, but the last one chickens out. Uh, so you want to manage still your have, resources. Uh, one more so fight after the fourth cop. Yeah, yeah, the, the chief himself. Um, just the cops themselves. Um, so you kind of want to manage your resources throughout the fight so that you're ready for Captain Strong. Um, you don't want to use too many of your psychic points because you want to be able to rock in Strong at the end just to get the fight over with. He is a boss. Um, so you're just kind of managing yourself throughout these fights, making sure you're, you're not using too many psychic points, using your burgers correctly, and, and keeping your health. Especially this last cop is is pretty important to make sure that your health is pretty high for Strong going into that fight because Strong can open up with an attack that can do, you know, 40, 50, 60 damage. Them. So this guy's keeping his psychic points at uh, 20. That's going to allow him to get two rockins off on Strong guarantees two rockins. I'm definitely going to start with a burger on turn one. Um, Strong is not nearly as aggressive as the cops. Strong has a weak attack, which is about 25. A strong attack is about 45. Uh, he can look, raise his offense by one, and he can also be on guard, as he, as he did there. And there. Yeah, he does have some dead movesets uh, that the cops don't. Yeah, so I just got a couple of uh, wasted turns, basically. From him, he just wasted all of his turns without it doing any damage to us, which means that we're, we've got full health, which will save us a few segments in Tucson. We won't have to do a life. It also means we're out of on it, which is a big step in the wrong. We, we race glitchless almost every week, and, and on it is it's just one of those spots you hear a lot of deaths and. Everyone always kind of breathes a sigh of relief uh, after you get get strong down. Yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of the the first big hurdle out of the way. Uh, first of many, but uh, definitely one that we want to try to avoid uh, dying too often. And now, ideal ideally, we'd be getting, if, if things were going well, we'd be getting through there in the twenty eight to twenty nine minute mark. I'm not I, I don't I don't have a timer up, so I don't know, but. I, that seemed pretty reasonable, I'm guessing. It was probably about 29 flat. Yeah, that was, that was definitely sub-30. I don't know for sure, but it, it felt like a sub-30 on it. For... All right, we do need to pick up two bur uh, two butterflies. Uh, I don't know who that is, so uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know who that number is. It's calling from out of state. Um, I'm not going to answer that right now. So you saw this guy has kind of quickly grabbed that exit mouse there. Um, we won't be using that anytime soon, but uh, we do need to grab it for a dungeon later in the run, and that's the closest we're going to get to that exit mouse house. Uh, the exit mouse works like a rope in other JRPGs. It just uh, gets you right out of a dungeon, sends you back to the entrance from the... We'll be, we'll be using that exit mouse in about an hour. So we're going to get some money here. Uh, it's going to allow us to get some items, advance the storyline a bit. Uh, 
it's also going to get a save here. This is going to serve multiple purposes. Uh, it's a good safety save, first of all, for the run, uh, marathon run, and it also will serve as a death warp point uh, after after Happy Happy Village. So just some more storyline advancement here. We just made it out of on it. We're getting into the second town, Tucson. Um, and we're, we got here. butterflies taken care of. You're getting some pretty good butterfly luck here. Um, the idea with the butterflies is after getting out of on it, you have pretty much no psychic points. Uh, you could go to a hotel and stay, but there's a very high butterfly spawn rate throughout these areas. So we'll just take the butterflies and uh, get Which, ourselves uh, all filled up resource-wise. Uh, here we're paying off the Apple Kid. Um, this is a investment that's gonna pay off pretty pretty well throughout the run here. So there's some uh, horribly contrived coincidences. He's going to invent just the items that we need to advance the game for at various points. Pretty conveniently. Uh, so because we're speedrunners and we know the game, we're just gonna you know we go straight to Apple Kid. I'm gonna give him his money and we're gonna head head through and, and activate some triggers. Uh, it's gonna get us to advance the storyline a bit here and get it. Yeah, the game wants us to fight Everdread and find out that Paula's been kidnapped by the happy, happy cultists over to the uh, east of Tucson. But we don't have to do that and we will not be fighting Everdread. So we get to skip one storyline boss in the run through not any sort of glitches, just knowing that knowing the game and uh the fact that uh the game allows us to sequence break without doing anything yeah, it's a less commonly known fact you don't have to fight ever dread is is an optional buff so i'm gonna be very very uh i'm gonna be quiet i'm gonna kind of focus because there are ufos here and those are very dangerous enemies and they have very uh dangerous and hard to uh, predict movement patterns so Gonna be focusing for a couple yeah, so this part of the run, uh, this is Peaceful Rest Valley, uh, definitely very volatile area. Um, you saw Sky's kind of moving a specific way up top here. He's just uh, hitting an event trigger, uh, which is loading the pencil eraser into memory. Uh, we didn't actually see it. You don't have to actually go and hit the pencil. You just have to load it into memory. Uh, nice dodge there from Sky's to get around that UF. Yeah, that was definitely a little, little sketchy, but thankfully. Uh... Thankfully, it paid off for me. At least, at least if, if we had died, if we had gotten into a fight, I did have full HP and side get points. So, at, at a at a small time loss, I should have, should be able to beat that fight. Yeah, not the worst case if you get in a fight with that thing, especially like this guy said with with all his psychic points. But uh, just a time loss and kind of an inconvenience. But if you don't have psychic points uh, or good health, if you hadn't got butterflies, those UFOs can quite certainly could. This game has a pretty decent experience curve, and especially in terms of a speed run. Uh, we're still definitely a low level. We're going to be a low level through the first early part of the game here. Um, but once we start hitting mid and late game, the experience curves out quite nicely. And uh, you know, once we start beating a bunch of bosses, we'll be yeah. It's it's quite quite the quite quite in contrast to Lagaya, which has one of the most unforgiving experience curves in the game. We get like so few levels, it's not even funny. Um, just because the experience required is so uh, high. But this game is pretty generous with experience. Yeah, this game definitely doles it out, especially once you hit later, later in the game. So we're going to pick up the pencil eraser, which, uh, as I mentioned from Apple Kids, that uh, erases any pencil-shaped objects, including the iron pencil statue that we uh, loaded into memory. And you may have just barely been able to get, catch a tiny little glimpse of um, a little bit earlier. Now we're going to head back there. Now that we have the item that will, that was just a check for uh, make make sure 100% that I've got my full HP and slightly points. Yeah, you always kind of want to make sure you're you're capped out before you head into a PRV. And just, I, I had gotten the two butterflies, I knew my health was at full, but it's just always good to, to verify, just don't trust your memory too much. Yeah, definitely, always, always good to check, just pop that B button real quick and take a look. It takes, some... it takes a quarter of a second to just quickly check that. So we've got the key item, the pencil eraser, doing a little couple errands here just to keep things going. Um, 
Now we're going to make our way through Peaceful Rest Valley, PRV, as I'll be referring it to you from now on. Uh, this area is terrible. Uh, it's it's no fun. Uh, sometimes yeah, it can go really Japanese well. We're going to see skies using a lot of despawning, respawning. Uh, uh, Grateful Dead Valley, and uh, it certainly lives up to that moniker. There's a lot of death that occurs in Grateful Dead Valley. Yeah, it's kind of got a lot of probably reset valley uh probably rip valley it's got a lot of a lot of different names and mother too yeah it's it's grateful dead valley which they couldn't use in north america i'm gonna erase the pencil uh, you're gonna see a few of these throughout the run uh, it's definitely a key item keeping that pencil eraser and you'll see a few of these statues i don't need that butterfly Yeah, I'll be taking some of these these things a little bit slow, just to give myself a few, a uh, couple more seconds to kind of see if there's anything uh, ugly. Uh, and, and it's another use of the stutter step and kind of stutter the edge of the screen and see what's happening. Yeah, give myself just a little bit more time to see if there's anything uh, unbecoming uh, in the direction where I'm going, because I know there, I know I kind of know from experience where kind of the, the likely spawn points are of different enemies. Or particularly yeah, the there, robos there are and the several UFOs spawn tiles here. And some areas are heavier than others. Um, I would definitely get the uh, the hard hat if uh, looks like I might be pincered. Uh, if I were if I didn't have the cheap bracelet. But having that with with the cheap bracelet, uh, this it's not a hundred percent consistent, but it's reasonably consistent enough that I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna take this fight. It's an auto win. It gets one experience, whatever. Uh, I'd rather just do that than try to worry about stuttering it, maybe getting into a red, a back attack, and then losing a bunch of time. Yeah, sometimes you'll see runners stutter that snake to not take the fight, but yeah, I agree. It's kind of just better to just take it, just get through, get through. Get a couple items here, uh, a couple little upgrades that are going to be useful. Uh, and then we're going to grab some safety items here from the left merchant refreshing herbs. Uh, one will be used almost certainly for Belch, and uh, another one is a safety for Mole Cave in case we get in a fight and get poisoned, which can definitely be a run killer. So a couple safety items, a couple healing healing items before we uh, head up. Uh, run, whoop. run was about to start going down south right there. Run seems to be going pretty well at this at this point. Nothing, nothing particularly unbecoming has happened. Although we are in a another location where something unbecoming can happen very quickly. Yeah, we're out we're out of on it, which is uh, a pretty heavy heavy death area. So we didn't we didn't die there, which is which is really. It's completely reasonable to have an on it death in, in these types of runs and still carry on and still have a fine run. So not dying is, is definitely a pl So now we have the uh, the shack fight. Two uh, cultists and a crow. Why the crow? Nobody knows, but he's uh, he's plenty annoying. Yeah, these cultists in there and their pet crow apparently. So we're gonna. So we'll just use our AOE here and, and get these guys out of here. They have 94 HP, so it is possible to one-shot them with the uh, with with a rocket, but it's not super likely. And these these cultists are actually scripted as boss fights, uh, so you can't run away from them, even if you get a green swirl. Uh, you fight like one or something. That was wow, that was that was a close. Call. So we'll heal up here. Uh, there's a couple other fights we, we can't skip uh, that'll be coming up. Actually, just... I'm sorry. Uh, so again, just a lot of psychic point management, uh, managing your healing items and, and making sure you have enough to get through, uh, but not wasting too much time. Now 
we're gonna head to the uh, the sanctum here. There's a there's a cultist uh, kind of blocking me. It's likely to get me, so I'm trying to just go ahead and despawn them. Whoa! I did not see that. Okay, thank heavens uh, I caught it just in the nick of time. I'm gonna grab this. I'm seeing some really good uh, blocks here with the truck. I was uh, so busy looking at one cultist that I did not even notice the other one. Until it was almost too late. Don't go to heaven, yep. We're kind of going to be fighting that jerk here in just a moment. I'll pick up that treasure uh, year after Carpainer. As a skip sandwich, we'll need a notorious play. amount of lag in this. That's so this cultist is just one. Oh, nice smash. So we'll just bash that one through and, and yeah, unless he calls sometimes him out, they can call. Just definitely just want to bash him. Yeah, it can be a pain if they call for help. He'll get another buddy, but you still have the psychic points to rock, and it would have been fine. But it can just take extra time and be a pain. That's now we're gonna fight uh, Mr. Carpainer. Uh, Carpainer, another script. Yeah. He operates on a six-turn script. We want him to. Uh, hit us with lightning so we can use our Franklin badge to reflect the lightning back at him and do a bunch of damage. He's got about 265 health, I believe. Yeah, you may have missed it real quick there, but we got another key item from Paula, which is a Franklin badge. It's going to reflect. Oh, great damage first couple times. Should be almost dead. Got him. Okay. It's a good fight. Four turn. It's gonna reflect. <laughs> uh, it does look like you're cutting out a little bit at times, Temple. Just from what I can hear, this might help if you adjust the noise gate just a bit on your end. So I went ahead and dropped my cheat bracelet and my extra croissant just for inventory manager purposes. I grabbed the uh, skip sandwich, I'll need that for Monkey Cave in uh, a little bit more, in an hour and 10 minutes or so. At this point, there's no more cultists after you defeat Mr. Carbon. You don't have to worry about cultists spawning anymore because we've beaten the cult. Um, and now we do have to worry about crows still. So this pattern that I kind of take to get to Paula's, uh, Paula's shack is, uh, helps to avoid those. And we'll just go ahead and use the key of the cabin. And now we're going to uh, use a death warp to get back to Tucson. Uh, to the department store, which is the last place where we saved. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the homestead. We're going to give that to Paula for later. And we're going to drop the teddy bear. Teddy bear is a, is a quasi consumable item. Uh, enemies that uh, can attack a character uh, uh, can, will target a character at random, can also choose um, to target the teddy bear. Um, and they tend to target the teddy bear, I believe, 75% of the time. And the teddy bear just absorbs some hits until eventually it, it uh, explodes into a pile of fluff. So we're just going to go ahead and intentionally get into a fight, intentionally get back attacked. And we're just going to hope for the, uh, the mole to kill us quickly. Whoops, uh, we're going to go ahead and use the ATM card. Using the ATM card in battle does nothing. Uh, it does, however... Uh, uh, allow us to, in effect, waste our turn without defending, because we do want to take damage. And unfortunately, sometimes the mole is not super cooperative. And, uh, just kind of at the mercy of uh, what the mole decides to do. Because he can get himself, he can uh, become, he can get himself confused. 
uh, you can uh, waste turn being absent-minded, or uh, if, we get, if, we get, if you're lucky, you will actually scratch us, and there we go. It took a little bit of time, but we did manage to uh, successfully complete the death warp. So we're going to work back at the department store in Tucson, which is the last place we've ever seen. We're going to take out some money. I'd like to take out 400 bucks if possible. Um, that does not seem to be the case, so we'll just take out 350. That should be enough still. And we're going to head to the hospital. We need, we need to have Paul revived um, and in the party in order to do the next couple of things that we need to do. So the, the hospital's right up here. We're going to go in here. We're going to talk to the hospital, pay 100, 100 bucks, and uh, revive Paula. Yeah, I should have taken out 340 bucks just, just to defy the meme because I'd like to do that from time to time. Yeah, my mistake. So we'll talk to him. He's going to give us a backstage pass that allows us to get into his shows, the Runway 5 show, which we'll need in just a moment. I'm going to head to uh, Paula's house in the preschool. Ooh, whoa, there's a smorgasbord of enemies. Thankfully, we can kind of cut through there to avoid those. Roll along the bottom. Go into this room. As soon as we get to the table, uh, Paula's father come in here. Paula's father is going to agree to, uh... Allow Paula to join Nance on, on the journey. At this point, uh, Everdreads and Forrester is going to tell us that, uh... Everdreads waiting for us in Berlin Park, so we're going to go over and we're going to talk to him. And don't worry, after we've re rescued Paula and triggered that scene, Everdread will no longer want to fight us, so we'll never have to fight him. And now he has been permanently skipped. Hooray! Uh, and Everdread's like, well, I wanted you to be my partner, but I'm going to actually give you 10,000 bucks, which we will uh, need for more contrived coincidences here in just a moment. So we have the backstage pass and the water bill, so it's time. Kid. Oh, welcome back. Oh, were you saying something? I apologize. Uh, we're going to take that. Uh, that nothing, just, it's awfully suspicious ever dread handing over $10,000 to some kid. That, that he doesn't. He's never talked to Ness before, but he's just going to randomly hand him over 10000 bucks. Yeah, just imagine that. So this is, uh, talk to that, that girl, uh, let her into the backstage, uh, and now we're just gonna go out here, we're gonna have a little bit of an input break while the uh, Runaway 5 play their uh, first show. We do have a few input breaks during the run, so, uh, there's, um, so this is the Runaway 5 in the Japanese version, they are the Tanzura Brothers, and, uh, yes, their outfits have been censored a little bit to make them look less like the Blues Brothers, presumably for, uh, potential issues with intellectual property. Uh, they did get censored a little bit in the North American release. Um, just uh, enjoy the uh, enjoy the show. Temple, is there anything that you wanted to add or or make mention of at this time? No, sorry, I'm just trying to get these this audio thing figured. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, one of one of many many cutscenes we get in the run here, which is nice. Um, the run's pretty long, and there's a few of these like couple minute cutscenes, which which can make for a nice bathroom break. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use a bathroom break, but I'm gonna wait until the uh, Skyrunner because that's a good two minutes. Well, I mean, I could probably rush during this scene or during the next one coming right up. Oh, uh, the sixth member. Yeah, that's that's Gary. Uh, he's he's the house piano guy. He's not actually in the band. Yeah, you'll you'll see once we uh, we're, so we're gonna go to the manager. We're gonna give him the ten thousand dollars and buy the Runaway Five out of their whoa, and buy the Runaway Five out of their contract. He's gonna, the manager's just be like, I'm not sure what to do. I got the money. I don't care if it, if you paid him out of their con if you bought him out of their contract. That's fine. I got my money. I don't care. They're free to go. Just give me my money. <laughs> uh, 
One of the uh, Runaway Fly members says we won't be so gullible next time. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. So once again, we're going to walk to the right first. That'll avoid a photo trigger, which costs about 22 seconds. And ideally, we'd be uh, getting on the bus about 50 minutes in. So I'd probably get, I'm going to guess it's probably about 51 minutes in, if I, just, if I had to just speculate. But still, reasonable pace. Uh, nothing... Nothing too bad has occurred uh, thus far. I enjoy so far, the so music. Great, great soundtrack in this game. It definitely helps when you have to play it over and over and over. So story-wise here, we were able to head to three because these guys rock so hard that the ghosts can't handle. Yeah, there, there's a there's a ghost blocking this tunnel into three. There would if we tried to take a normal bus or tried to just walk through the tunnel, the ghost would get a hold of us and they'd tell us go back, go back, and we'd get sent back to Tucson. But the Runaway Five bus is so loud um, that the ghosts are just like, yeah, I'm not having any of this, and they're gonna. Uh, not be able to bother us, and we can get uh, to three. This is our next town. Quick little spawny area here. The graveyard is, is can be pretty tricky, but we'll try to work our way around some gravestones and avoid all the fights. Yeah, this is definitely... Okay, I see uh, that, that guy hanging down there. There's a couple spawns. We're going to go around them. So, yeah, we got the graveyard. This is definitely... Uh, a troll location, um, so I'm going to be paying attention to the lag on screen and keeping out, uh, keeping a feel for lag and watching out for flies, which have pretty erratic movement, kind of like the UFOs. That's a, just a regular trash can, but there are enemies that look like trash cans. They're uh, you can see they're considerably uh, more pale than the actual trash cans. They're kind of a yellowish, uh, a yellowish cream. The enemies are like a, a blank white. Those are both enemies, as are those. A quick little trigger there to advance the storyline. So we have to view the, the zombies blocking the three tunnel. And once we've done that, there's going to be a uh, an NPC that looks a little bit suspicious. We're going to follow her because you know, that, that just seems like an absolutely fantastically wonderful idea to do that. It's definitely something worth investigating. Yeah, definitely not suspicious at all. Definitely just an ordinary, oh, well, there's a bunch of zombies and ghosts, and... And we're, we're in prison. Paul and Ness are now in prison. Well, that sucks. Uh, we're, yeah, we're trapped here. No fun. And uh, I, guess, I guess that's it, we're, we're locked. We're, uh, we're locked. We're locked yep, in here, we can't run. get out. Death by cutscene is certainly not any fun. You're correct. <laughs> it is not. So, Winter is a small country to the north. This is roughly based on uh, the United Kingdom, whereas Eagle Land, uh, which is where we were before, is roughly America. Um, so this is kind of the uh, affectionate uh, parody of, of uh, Great Britain, the United Kingdom. Some people like to call this area Canada, but I think Saturn Valley has a better argument for being <laughs> Canada. I, I always figured that this was kind of the kind of the Great Britain parody. That makes sense. I like that. And then, uh, and then I would say like Summers is kind of uh, like Greece or Italy. Scaraba would be kind of Egypt. Definitely Egypt. So this is uh, similar to when we got Ness earlier. Jeff is, you know, level one, pretty low. So we're gonna have to work our way up and uh, kind of get through some fights with him being a low level. By the way, this is. 
This is Tony. He'll be joining us for about, uh, about a minute and a half. So about a minute, about 45 seconds more. Then he's going to leave the party for good. So apparently this lab teacher has nothing better to do in the middle of the night but to troll students, which makes sense. Seems reasonable. So with, once we have the machine that opens doors, especially when we have a slight bad key, we're going to use it to uh, grab a Holmes hat and a pop gun. There's another instance where they won't let you leave unless you have something equipped. Yeah. You have to you have to get both of those items, and I think you have to have the gun equipped before it'll let you leave. The other, uh, other loggers, I think, are either empty and or they have cookies in them, which we don't need to get. Yeah, there's not much in the other. And we're going to get the worst enemy, we're going to get the worst NPC in the party, the Bubble Monkey. Wanted for crimes against Earthbound speedrunners. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the dreaded Bubble Monkey. One of those things that's like, to a casual player, it's like, oh, what a cute monkey into a speedrunner. It's this thing is the absolute depth. <laughs> reason we loathe it so much is because as you'll see he'll lag behind sometimes and which will cause you to get into unnecessary fight. Yeah, I got a green on the goat. Oh, somehow green. I think bubble monkey, uh, I think oh, it was good, the side that with the bubble monkey there. Yeah, some bubble monkey shenanigans working up. Yeah, working in my favor for a change, but don't worry, he'll, he'll get his revenge. Just look at that grin on his face, he's just like, I'm gonna totally ruin this speedrunner today, just look at it, just look at it! It's look period. at that face. It's like, I'm gonna troll this guy, I just, I just, you just know it. Monkey is especially a, a pain, and we're coming up to Pond Cave. He'll he'll be a kind of a jerk in there. Hopefully not. Well, Brick Road first. Brick Road is his first opportunity to really be a jerk, and then Pond Cave as well. And here we have the fan favorite. Te yeah. Another nice little look. Little cutscene here. The artist who designed this sprite needs needs a raise. I mean, look at this is. Just look at the majesty of uh, the Loch Tess monster. Just a smile that won't. <laughs> So after this cutscene, uh, we'll be fighting what's affectionately known as the hardest enemy in Earthbound. Um, because Jeff is such a low level and we haven't fought anything, uh, this protoplasm coming up can be a pretty tricky fight. Um, yeah, uh, we said we call common... him the hardest enemy in Earthbound and we're only half speaking in jest. Yeah, only on... Uh, saying um, goodbye to Tess. But we have 30 team. health and he can hit for like 10 and call for help, so it, it can be... Definitely a definitely a troll encounter for sure. Yeah, MS Paint Beast. Fortunately, not not FFZ enabled in this channel. So we're gonna walk to the left there. That avoids 100% goat spawn uh, after those trees. But uh, now here we go, Brick Road. So as please don't dunk on me now. So the first pro is pretty much nigh unskippable. Now you can skip this fight, but it's it's extremely difficult to pull off and very rare, very RNG to pick. Alright, two failed calls for help, so that's good. And we are out of the, the hardest fight in the game. Yeah, two calls for help that fail are definitely, uh... Don't eat the boiled egg. So now we're gonna try 
hopefully the uh, duck is in an agreeable position. And yes, the duck immediately went to a very agreeable spot that we were able to lure him over and uh, get bought right by him. Perfect. And the bubble monkey cooperated as well, right. allows, allowing us to skip the second protoplasm. Uh, fight, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually take a safety save here, uh, just in case Pond Cave goes bad. Uh, it's a real quick save. Those are two two great skips there, two fights we didn't have to go through, so that's it. Yeah, and that guy that you saw just uh, out of Brick Road, just uh, be mindful. We'll see him again in a couple hours. Yeah, Brick Road will be. We'll be back, and more annoying than ever. Uh, so this is the pond cave. We're going to see more of uh, the stutter steps being exploited here. Pretty much every enemy in here is stutter steppable, except for the except for the mushrooms, which are thankfully short-range aggro types. Yeah, the mushrooms have a very small aggro. Uh, it's just going to have to stutter. It's tough because the more enemies that there are on screen, the more lag there is, which makes it tough to stutter, but you can see some great stutter stepping. Yeah, you also, uh, the bubble monkey can also pause and decide to kind of troll you. If that happens, you just want to stop your stutter stepping for just a little bit, let the bubble monkey catch back up to you, and then go ahead and uh, continue once he's caught up. Yeah, you just stop moving altogether because those enemies won't move unless you... Here's kind of common despawning, uh, just looking for a favorable pattern here from the enemy. Yeah, you can stutter this, but if there's a if there's a, enough enemies and there's some lag, then you have to worry about uh, is there a mushroom? And I just prefer to just despawn when possible. Right. We got into the third room right away. That's uh, that's definitely good. We got through it pretty quickly as well. I'm gonna grab this bottle rocket. I'm gonna wait for Bubble Monkey, and then we're gonna use the uh, bag of chewing gum. So the Bubble Monkey will float up here and uh, drop down the rope so we can continue on. And there's uh, one more spawn fight to worry about with some mushrooms up on the top, and then we will be out of Brick Road, or out of Pond Cave. My apologies. All right, that one, on, one, the, uh, spawn one on the one is the one we hit. Those two on the right, those are fine. They'll not get us, as you can see there. Just gonna walk right by them. Yeah, it's nice with the spawn tiles there. You can work it so those guys can just get stuck on the wall. So the bubble monkey is going to chase after uh, his new girlfriend. Uh, meanwhile, uh, no, there's still the winners. We'll be, a great one. There. we'll be coming back there in a couple of hours, but for right now, I'm just going to head to Dr. Ananas' lab and get the Skyrunner so we can head over to rescue uh, Jet, uh, Ness and Paula. This segment can be pretty difficult with everything that's going on, but uh, that, was, that was very... That was a very clean uh, winters. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, uh, once the Skyrunner starts moving, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a quick uh, quick break to the restroom because we do still have a good bit of run left to go, and uh, this is a two-minute cutscene. Input breaks just enjoy the Skyrim ride, and I will be right back. Great music, more, more fantastic music going on. I don't want to talk too much over it, but uh, I can explain a couple things that are going on uh, coming up in the. It's kind of nice we get a little little preview of, of what's to come here through this little... Um, so you saw Skies grab a bottle rocket there coming out of Pond Cave. Uh, Jeff comes equipped with a big bottle rocket. Uh, these bottle rockets are going to be key throughout the run. Uh, so we have to kind of have to manage them accordingly. Uh, the big bottle rocket we won't be using anytime soon. Uh, but the bottle rocket... We Bottle rockets are pretty busted in this game, not only just being a, a heavy physical item, um, but 
once we start being able to cheese our speed strat, uh, we're actually going to be able to use bottle rockets too. So they're going to be pretty key throughout. Coming up, we're just going to rejoin the team. We're going to grab a, a teddy bear and a, and a chest that's going to be right outside, and then we're going to head toward. I I am going to go ahead and I'm going to take a safety save in the hotel before Boogie Tent, just because. Uh, there are certain patterns that, that Bogey 10 can do that are not particularly common, but they can very easily ruin your day. And if I've used my BBR and then I die and I have to try to beat that fight without a BBR, it's just a real hassle. So uh, just to prevent the, the, just to acknowledge the tail end uh, poor RNG that can happen, uh, I will go ahead and uh, eat 20 seconds or so to make a quick safety save uh, once we get out of... Uh, once we get out, uh, out of this little graveyard section and get into uh, and into uh, three proper just before we get into the movie tent. That's definitely a smart idea to take a safety save before tent. He can he can definitely kill. It's just it's it hurts so much to die to boogie tent because uh, Paul and Jeff will be dead. You have to revive them. You're really low on money at this point, so it can just be a real half. Uh, little skip of the 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 door that was locked uh, text box if you're able to skip that. It's a quick little text skip there. Um, it'll, if you actually run into the door, it'll say it's locked. But if you use the item within a trigger zone, it'll you'll skip that text. You kind of want to come out come at it from uh, from below. Uh, that that seems to maximize the chance of getting that little skip. Just, like I said, I'm going to just pop into the hotel here. I'm going to call Dad real quick and make a quick safety save before we go fight Boogie Tent. It's definitely smart to take as many safety saves as you can in a marathon run, especially with Earthbound. This game will just kill you out of nowhere. Listen to the hotel music for a little bit. So make our way to Boogie Tent. I actually misspoke earlier. Uh, we will be using a, a big bottle rocket uh, on the tent here. Yeah. A pretty straightforward fight, especially with uh, that BB. I'm going to start with Defend Defend BBR just to uh, maximize the chance that Jeff gets it off. Okay, he's, he wait, basically wasted his turn of defense spray. 555. And right. he's, got about 20, he's got about 20 health left. Uh, he's got 576 health, I believe. Uh, there we go. That was a very clean tent fight. Uh, we got about a minute of gaining levels here, so uh, enjoy the uh, enjoy the uh, gaining levels music. Yeah, this is kind of the first time that Paula has been in any fights, and it's a boss fight. So Jeff is going to game some levels. Ness is going to game some levels. So it's just a, everyone. Ness gains one level. Experience. Paula's going to gain uh, nine levels, eight or nine levels, and Jeff is going to gain about seven or eight levels. Welcome back. Uh, so a pretty popular race category in Earthbound is up to here, the, the Boogie Tent. Um, and uh, the reason for that is it, it, the difficulty ramps up quite heavily here um, for the next few dungeons. So uh, it'd be yeah. cool to see. Between it's cool here to see, uh, and, next couple sections. and uh, department stores, definitely a whole slew of run killers. Yeah, I mean, we have three tunnel coming up. We have uh, Belch's base and Grapefruit uh, Falls and, and Mall Cave and Department Store. It's just the whole next few sections are just really, it, it ramps up quite. Just doing some inventory management here. Moving some items on to Paula. So yeah, in an effort to keep Boogie Percent pretty simple, we, we ended it there because uh, three tunnel is quite difficult. I imagine we'll be seeing a safety save there as well. Yes, uh, after we uh, go to the hotel, after we stay the night at the hotel, we will definitely be making another safety save uh, before we go into three tunnel. 
stocking up on a couple quick items here. This is arms dealers back here. He's got a weapon for Jeff uh, and then some some bottle rockets that we're gonna need for the next I'm, couple I'm dungeons. Do, uh, not, I'm not gonna bother with the, with the toy. I'm not going to bother with the toy air gun. No. Uh, but I yes, am gonna get one of those things. Some people get it. You really right. don't need it. Jeff's first gun is is enough to get through. Yeah, I'm not. It, it helps it's a little. Do. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, I forgot I got to do this first. I was I was walking up to uh, the hotel. It's like uh, I still got one thing to do here first. So we're gonna see a cool little trick here. This was found somewhat recently. We're gonna actually go into the tent, and uh, the delivery guy is gonna come through the tent and deliver to us, which saves us a couple seconds maybe, but. Uh, hashtag. Enjoy the music as well. Yeah, I, I kind of screwed up. I was uh, heading to the hotel. I was like, yeah, I forgot I gotta get the zombie paper first. <laughs> Got a little bit ahead of myself. Nah, no big deal. That is that trigger there that you get it no matter. Yep. Earthbound. Some more plot advancement. We're gonna stay the night. We saw you drop that zombie paper in the tent. That's gonna cause these zombies to flock towards the paper, and it's gonna allow us to get into three. Yep. So uh, we'll uh, stay the night at the hotel. The zombies will disappear. We'll get access to three tunnel, which we saw with uh, Ness and Paul before we get Jeff's little section. And now we're going to head to Three Tunnel, which is definitely one of the major roadblocks. Definitely a, a big running killer for people of all skill levels. Even the, even the very yeah, top doesn't runners matter. lose runs here. Yeah, this is a super, super difficult area. He can be a top runner in this game and, and very easily die to this next section. Yeah, we're, we're very much, much at the mercy of Arn Gygus here. Also, hey, very much Pokemon. Tonight. The flame. That's definitely one of the reasons we have that teddy bear with us. Uh, the teddy bear is going to soak up some damage, hopefully. Uh, the bear has a 75% uh, chance to block any of the three kids. Yeah, uh, those flies are tough to see. Sucks. Not a huge deal. These guys are pretty easy to take care of. Uh, just freeze them. They're very weak to freeze. The 170 damage, so they got like 110 health. And that kind of, those things just kind of happen in this run. Um, you know, it's just stuff you don't see, and, and you're just going to get thrown into fights every once in a while, and you just kind of... Yeah, it's just a difficult fight, just didn't really... Didn't see it in time, didn't, wasn't able to react quite fast enough. But here's 3 Tunnel. So there's a lot of nasty spawns, a lot of uh, enemies, and we don't really want to fight anything in here if we can help it. This is just a run. Uh, just, uh, there was a dog. If it was just the zombie down at the very bottom, I could probably get by him, but the dogs do move faster and more aggressive. Yeah, the zombies aren't too bad, but the dogs and the flies, you don't really want to deal with. Alright, there we go. We got, a, we got an empty room, so we got a few more rooms to go through. Alright, now we got our next uh, big room, which is another lot of, bunch of high spawn plates. Yeah, pretty much all these big rooms are, are going to have some spawns unless you just get the nose. That's unfortunate. We're going to freeze out the uh, zombie, the ghost first. And they, they hit the teddy bear. I am Dr. Skies. Uh... Yeah, the ghost is definitely the more... Uh scary of the monsters there. You want to take them down first and then just deal with the zombie. And the bear is doing his job proper. That's always good to see. Uh, I do have to be mindful. I don't have an infinite amount of resources, um, health and psychic points to, to work with as, as well. Um, so, unfortunately, we have to, to be cautious about how many fights we get into. 
like the double zombie fight is actually not super threatening. Whoa, that was not good. Like, but I am losing resources quickly. Yeah, this is where three K before we talk about it gets pretty difficult. You're trying to despawn these rooms and you're just getting in fights in the hallways and it's just gonna be a real pain when you're despawning. Yeah. This fight's just more of a time waste than anything, not super scary or anything. Yeah, it is however taking side points from me, so For sure. I, I don't have an infinite store, like I really don't wanna use any more of Paula's side points. Okay. These guys I can actually sneak by. With a, nice. with a specific position that they were in, I was able to get by him. That was a great. All right, this is a green, so I get to uh, auto run from this fight. Yeah, anytime you get a green swirl, it's it's an automatic 100% run away. Except it's a scripted, for scripted fight. Yeah. Enemies in, in, uh, have scripted fights like slimy piles and uh, cultists. Whoa, that was really bad. I thought I could get back in, and I I just botched it. I'm gonna go actually burn a, a rocket here. Yeah, so it's like your point's definitely getting kind of low, but I, th I think you should be okay for build. I really can't afford to use any more rockets. No. There goes my bear. That's not good. Oh, Rip bear. Alright, so that's the last fight before the boss. Um, should head right into the pile here. A uh, nice level up for Paula. Yeah, I really don't have that many resources left. I think it'll be okay. So, hopefully, as long as. Uh, yeah, we're definitely relying on Jeff a lot here, which is... Yeah, those bottle rockets can definitely miss. Uh... I'm gonna go for a solidify. Uh, the freezes don't really do much, but they do have a solidify chance. Alright, here we go. If this doesn't hit, we're going to burn strats. Ah! Fart! Whoops. He's almost dead. Uh, but we're out of resources. Yeah, Jeff, of course, missed with that last run. Hey! I hey. gotta revive. Hey, and then we got a, uh, and, and then we got a dazzling light. Excellent. That worked. We got a, uh, pop, we got a, a Jeff, we got a nest revive, and then a uh, dazzling light to kill. So that that was go go really going down to the wire, but uh, it thankfully paid off for us. We were able to get out of the fight. Yeah, that revive chance is one in sixteen. So that's it. Definitely some cool uh, I saw someone in chat ask how the glitch runs so much faster. Uh, just very quickly, uh, it's very, very heavily manipulated and just skips like 90% of the story through glitch. Yeah, the, the basic premise of the any percent run is that the entire game is on one giant map. And by going out of bounds, you can walk and kind of work between uh, different regions with, with, uh, with limited uh, restrictions kind of at will and hit, hit some end game triggers very quickly. Um, and then just go straight to the end game. Yeah, definitely clutch, clutch pile fight there. Yeah. Right. So we made our way through Grapefruit Valley, uh, Grapefruit Falls. And we're making our way to Saturn Valley here again, just more plot advancement. Uh, trying to just get through the storyline and on to the next dungeon. Oh, 
Well, in order to advance the plot, um, you go over here, you talk to this Mr. Souter, and he's going to tell us that there's a secret base behind Grapefruit Falls, and the password is to stand there and, and literally wait for three minutes. Basically, any anytime you hear that little sound in this game, that do do do, like it's you've you've advanced some plot trigger and it's you've done the. Th so we uh, go ahead and stay at the hotel there. A quick little heal before we head into the next dungeon. Yeah, Grapefruit Falls slash Belt Base next step, uh, dungeon. There are some roaches that can spawn in here, so we gotta watch out. Don't want to take any roach fights. Right, if I see a roach, I'll go ahead and despawn it. If they spawn far enough to the uh, left, it's generally possible to despawn them uh, before you hit the spawn plate uh, going back to the right, so you can kind of despawn without too much difficulty. Usually. You can also stutter them. Uh, but this is a little bit safer, and I'm not the greatest at stuttering. Alright, I see a bunch of enemies Actually, here, so pretty we're going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back in the cave and respawn Grapefruit. Uh, okay, thankfully there's nothing up here, but there's definitely going to be a lot of stuff up here. We have yeah, this area a, can be uh, very Fodra. volatile. There's three of them in the game, and possibly a couple more if I'm not good and I uh, accidentally hit them, but there's going to be three that we're not going to be really be able to avoid. So, like I said, we literally have to sit here for three minutes. So, twiddle your thumbs if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, uh, any, anything of the sorts. Uh. Yeah, the, the password here is to literally stand still for three minutes. Like, it's, it's not a joke, and we can't skip it in a glitchless run so you just have to sit here for three actual yep. so for the next uh so i'm gonna actually uh, i think i'm gonna go uh, grab a quick bite to eat real quick um if you have any questions post them in chat and i'll answer them when i get back here in just a moment Toby, Toby Fox is uh, very active in, in the Earthbound community, just in general. Uh, he's made a couple couple Earthbound ROM hacks before Undertale. It's actually some of the audio tracks from Undertale and some of his Earthbound ROM hacks. But yeah, it's no secret that Toby Fox is a huge Earthbound fan. Microwave strats. <laughs> um, just, just yeah, making, making a, just heating up a little bit of food because this is uh, one of the longer runs. Um, yeah, that's what's nice about it. Um, one, one of the caveats of it being long is that there's is a lot of good little breaks here that you can eat. Like I said, we got three minutes, and that's literally Shigesato Itoi, the creator, so that the reason why he put this there was so kids could take a break to get a bite to eat in the middle of the run, or in the middle of playing the game.
It's, it's sort of hypnotizing. Oh, okay. Normally I have my uh, timer on screen so I can uh, see kind of where we are. Uh, so these foppies, pretty, pretty easy fights. We like to call them uh, experience balloons. Yeah. Uh, they just drop experience and really aren't very threatening otherwise. Yeah, just some EXP balloons. And then later on we'll have uh, Fobby with a B, which are orange, and they are big experience balloons. Yes, mustn't, mustn't be confused with the Fobby. Let's see, they're pretty, uh, two enemy fights, you freeze one of them and then you bash the other one out. They have very low stats, very low defense. And they actually give a decent chunk of eight of, uh, of experience, so we're just gonna. I felt a lot of lag, so there's a lot of uh, them down there. I'm just gonna try to despawn until we have something. Whoa, that is a lot of lag. Yeah, one of the common strats in this run is, is being able to read screen lag, and it's it's pretty obvious when you put your hands on a controller and play this where lag is happening. Yeah, so just a single. Whoop, looks like I was trying to bring another one from uh, downstairs, but with a single one, just auto fight it. You pretty much will always die in uh, one round of auto fighting. And we'll use our iframes to get by this guy. Kind of go down here so he won't be able to uh, uh, chase it after me. So I gotta look out for some lag. Uh, looking looking for a spawn. There's a few spawn plates we gotta watch out for. So we'll just kind of despawn. Whoa, they kind of spawned a little close. Slimy pile, which we don't really want to fight. We don't want to fight those pile. Alright, there we go. Another we scripted. And a flag boss fight are those piles uh, because there was a boss in um, three cave. Now those are, are all considered and bosses as well as we can. Three cave. It's because there's the scripted fights. Like the guy who says like, it's not that I don't trust you. Like it's because of those scripted fights. Oops. Uh... Uh, they are weak to freeze and fire both. Uh, but this is the, the best way to you know, kind of conserve your side points is just use the freeze because it only costs uh, only costs four instead of six. A few, yeah, you could uh, fire, but it just end up costing you more second. Yeah. If there was a three plus fight, we'd be uh, using some fire, fire and rocking. Right. right so yeah, this guy here, we're gonna actually kind of lure him. As we, uh, these uh, these slimy piles are stutterable. Yeah, I, I screwed up the stutter, probably because there's a lot of enemies on screen. So, yeah, no, it, it wasn't on you. There's so many piles to the left, it caused too much luck. Yeah, these guys have 224 HP, so I just barely missed uh, the kill. But that's okay. Ness and Jeff finished. Hey, we got a bomb. I think those are either one or two in 128 chances. I mean, it's not really going to do us any good. We're just going to probably throw it on 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 Belch here. That makes sense. I mean, the bomb earlier would help, but not here. Uh, so we're going to defend. We're going to use the jar of fly honey, and we're going to defend. Yeah, I get another scripted fight. Once once he gets to fly, honey, he just won't attack, and he can take damage. He won't actually. I think he, he might take damage without the fly, honey, but you just can't kill. He doesn't take damage at all. Yeah, he just Based doesn't take on damage. The, like the ram values don't even move until you you use the fly, honey, on him. There is a way to kill him, but it's it requires way too much work. Uh, without the. Fly. So we just kind of stun him with the fly, honey. He gobbles it down and we'll just bash away. And... Just use an alpha there because I knew that would be enough. Use uh, Belch has uh, 650 health. Definitely one of the easiest uh, boss fights in the game. Yeah, that one's that one's pretty pretty straightforward and simple. This is where we're going to see that exit mouse we grabbed after on it between two and uh, so we're going to see that one get used. So we'll go ahead and 
and now I just exit mouse out of here and now we're gonna this is kind of a dangerous walk so I'm gonna kind of be quiet and focus yeah this this whole area is really bad with spawns all these enemies can just destroy yeah part of the reason why I use the uh, alpha the freeze alpha at the end um, like we're gonna be fighting that uh, Nice, is able to uh, actually nice. catch the frog uh, early and get a green there. I've been able Very to get nice it a couple group. of times. Yeah, yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, we'll grab that protein drink. We'll get that protein key. drink for monkey. Yeah, this area is. It, leads to a lot of pincer attacks uh, just with the, the structure of the the area you definitely get pincered a lot um, but you just kind of despawn your way out of it yeah i'll be using stutters to uh try to uh, advance uh, forward without um, them chasing me to minimize the chance of uh, uh pincers which is just kind of when i got enemies above me and below me and i have no way to uh Avoid taking at least one fight. Like right yeah, there. Sometimes just, oh, jeez. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Okay, so the, that that one that just ran for me is a black antoid. They're the same ones from... Um, giant Step. Yeah, from Giant Step. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to force a green. Oh, wow, I'm surprised. I thought I'd be able to force a green on him. I'm just gonna freeze out the red one. The black ones are no threat. And at this point, we're much higher level. We can easily uh, bash them out. Or rockin'. Very not threatening anymore. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where you have to take one of the fights. There's no way out. Yeah. Definitely not the not the Grapefruit Falls walk back that I was hoping for, but. Uh, so normally I'd be looking for a couple of butterflies, but since I will be uh, taking a safety save before Mole Cave, and actually I also want to uh, do a quick homesickness check there before Mo uh, Monkey uh, before Mole Cave as well, because um, it, it, you definitely don't want to be have Ness be homesick. If you want to explain homesickness here, real quick. Yeah, so that was a homesickness check there. Um, so basically, there's a stat that can cause Ness to become homesick. Uh, it happens. Fairly calm, not super calmly, but it can happen uh, during this section of the run. It's most likely to happen uh, between about Threed Cave and uh, I'd say about Paula Returns. Um, but it's based on Ness's level. The higher level he gets, the less likely he is to get homesick. Uh, and when he does get homesick in battle, he, he has a chance to just have his actions completely canceled. Uh, which can be a real pain, especially in this He starts part of thinking run. about his favorite food, or he starts missing mom, or stuff like that and the only way to cure it is to call mom but since we're going to be yeah, calling dad for a safety save uh, here in about six or seven minutes um well just if, if we need to we can call mom as well yeah it, until he hits level 15 he has no chance to become homesickness then between 16 and 30 he's got like a three and 128 or something. I don't know the exact number. And then like 31 to 45, he's got a chance, a, a little bit higher chance. And then 45 to 75, he's got a slightly higher chance. And then beyond 75, and then he never gets homesick again. You hardly ever see it uh, past Mall Cave. It's, it's pretty somewhat common in around the Mall Cave area, but um, because we get so many sanctuary heals later in the run, uh, which cures the homesickness. Uh, you, you just don't, don't really see it in the lake. I think you only get homesickness check. The game only checks to give you homesickness whenever you win a fight. And we really won't win many fights because we'll just be running from encounters um, pretty much uh, exclusively after uh, after Pyramid. Just a quick lazy man to start about this uh, whole thing rough. Yeah, pretty much after. So we're grabbing a, a big bottle rocket and a present coming up. Yeah, we kind of be mindful of uh, spawns as well. There are some nasty enemies, uh, buffaloes, for instance. There you go. Uh, Scalpians, uh, bukas, desert wolves, uh, 
an assortment of uh, enemies, most of which can be freezed pretty easily, but uh, still. Grab that yeah, Definitely kill, kill one of the kids in the party. Paula's had a bread big roll bottle rockets in her Paula's had a bread roll in her inventory yeah. since we first got her, and that's the reason why we haven't used it is we give it to uh, that guy so uh, we can uh, give him his food that he needs, uh, and that, that's one of the two things we have to do before we can get into the next dungeon. The other one is uh, we got to go talk to a certain NPC in uh, Forsyth. Just uh, got a couple minutes of walking and uh, a couple things we gotta do before we go into Mole Cave. Enjoy the uh, four side music, it's definitely something you may be familiar with from Smash Brothers. It's also just a great track altogether. Avoid that taxi that's an enemy, and it's a pretty nasty one. area of the game. So, the, the so once again, Runaway 5 got themselves in a jam. Yeah, the Runaway 5 are great uh, musicians, not so great at uh, contract negotiations and uh, finances, so they are in deep doo-doo with the uh, manager of the Tapala Theater. They owe her a million bucks, and we'd have to find buried gold, or we'd have no way to repay their uh, their debt. So now that we know that we have to go find buried gold, it's time to go back to Mole Cave. So that's going to be our next dungeon. So, like I said, normally a speedrun, I grab a couple butterflies, and since I will be taking a uh, I will be taking a dad call to uh, to heal myself up, or sorry, to save my game. I'll just go ahead and heal the shack, because once we go in the shack, it's just going to be faster to heal than to take the butterflies. I think uh, I, I think absolutely nobody would disparage me whatsoever for taking a safety save before Mole Cave. Uh, place is awful. There's uh, a lot of lot of there's many many different ways that, that Mole Cave can very very easily go wrong. This is one of those spots, especially in a casual playthrough, people struggle pretty, pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna heal before I call Dad, just in case we do have to load the save. Save me. We don't have to. about sto spoilers being at it's a speed run we, yeah. we all know what's gonna happen yeah I, I, I'm pretty sure that unless unless the speed run is blind which is this one is not most definitely not blind uh, don't worry I generally would think most speed run streams spoilers are off Darth Vader is Luke's father Jesus dies in the Bible then get then gets better there you go I just spoiled I just spoiled two things for you there you go you can thank me oh. later This is Mole Cave. Um, great, one of my favorite musics in the game. Uh, but definitely hey, a very Mulca. dangerous dungeon. Especially with Paul only has, having 75 max HP. Uh, so the strats with these moles, uh, the first two we're just going to freeze in Big Bottle Rocket. Uh, we've we've kind of hoarded these Big Bottle Rockets for these ter first two moles because they're so volatile. Uh, they're, they're like, we're actually going to get a second bottle. For these first two, it's just freeze, big bottle rocket, and for the uh, third, fourth, and fifth mall, we're gonna uh, just be freeze baiting them and healing. Alright, 
Paul has 81 max HP, so 78 is kind of the threshold you're looking for. Uh, 78 you can pretty consistently mash out uh, from Paula. If Paula takes mortal damage, you can mash out um, her her freeze, and as long as you don't get the solidify, uh, should be able to mash out to either the heal or to or for the first two moles to Jeff using the BBR to finish the fight. If you're taking mortal damage and you uh, uh, win the fight before the HP ticks down, uh, before it checks for death, you'll uh, come back with one HP and still be alive. And we will take it. We will abuse that mechanic a bunch. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and give that. Yeah, the rolling HP mechanic gets abused quite a bit in the. Yeah, you've already seen it some with like Frank, um, but you'll definitely see it a lot more in the late game once we have a lot more HP and we have more time to take actions while the HP is rolling. Uh, yeah, so this stutter stepping, um, it, it's it's movement based and frame based. The enemies will move based on when you move and they only read your movement uh, on certain frames. And it's only certain enemies, not every enemy works this way, but uh, they read your movement on certain frames and they move when you move on those frames. So if you can kind of lightly hit the D-pad and, and skip some of those frames, uh, which it's a pretty big frame window, uh, considering most frame windows in games, um, you can just kind of move right past. This fight is identical to the uh, first mold, but that's the reason why we want to kind of mash, start mashing right away. And as you can see, Paula died, but uh, we finished the fight before the game check for her de death. And so she is still alive at 1 HP. And that's that's a perfect it. example of what Skaz was talking about with the rolling HP. She can actually die, and as long as the enemy dies as well, she'll still... Yeah, the game only checks kind of between each person's action for deaths. So even though Paula had hit 0 HP, uh, because the fight was over, we'd kill the last enemy. The game immediately checks for that, sees that the fight's over, and then sets Paula back to 1 HP. There is Another one item the revival month. item here in Mole Cave, which is off to the right, but it does hit, it does um, trigger a bunch of spawns. It can be really problematic to go get it. Uh, so we're not going to unless we absolutely have to. All right, so we no longer have a uh, BBR, so our strategy is going to change a little bit for moles three, four, and five. Yeah, kind of shift the strategy here. Uh, the reason for that being mainly we're out of big bar rockets. Um, and we got to conserve all the psychic points. If we just freeze baited all the moles, she wouldn't have enough psychic points. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, this is the best area to be using those big bottle rockets um, because we gain access to more. We'll be able to buy more big bottle rockets coming up after this. Yeah, after this dungeon. Yeah. Next cut uh, after next dungeon, a couple cutscenes, we'll have access to being able to buy uh, BBRs, uh, and they're not super expensive either. We'll be buying a lot of explosives. Yeah, boy, will we be buying? What? What? What was that? I'm gonna stutter this ant. So you can kind of see the enemy is only reading on certain movements there, so you just skip over the other ones. You just kind of lightly feather the D-pad and you can get through. Oh, and we can't actually, uh, we're not, so the, the, the uh, diggers, the, the, uh, the moles here, they start with a uh, power shield that reflects physical damage that we deal back at us. Um, how, how, so we want to use only Psy attacks uh, against these moles. Um, with that said, if we kill the enemy, all, if we full sale, wholesale kill the enemy, the, the uh, shield won't happen. So that's how we're able to kill them with the, uh, the bottle rockets. Um, and because we actually kill them, the shield doesn't get a chance to proc, we just immediately kill them. I'm going to grab an exit mouse here because there's apparently an exit mouse location here in the, in the mole cave. Don't ask how they got there, just just video game logic, don't question it. Uh, now we're going to head down to the last mole. This hallway can be a real pain, there's just a 
tons and tons of spawn tiles and the yeah, there's there's just definitely a reason for forever can really uh, kill your spawn. Those are just going to be the one duck, so these ducks are the same ones from Brick Road. Uh, they can take side points from us, but all of having 28, I'm not too worried about that. If we actually, if we lose a couple side points, you just can't keep losing side points to him. Yeah, you just need 18 for yeah. the next. And even if we didn't have quite 18, uh, Nest can go with Rock and Betas. It's, it's riskier because there's a mischance on the Rock and Beta, but it is a, it is something you can do if it comes to it. So these ducks have a chance to run away based on our levels. Yeah, it looks like they're not happy. I'm just gonna fire them out. Yeah, they're not happy about that. Which is kind of more of a nuisance than anything. These these fights are not threatening. The, the biggest threat is Paul losing side points. Yeah, don't worry, we still got a good two two and a half hours left in the run. Easily. Probably 245 left. So if you're, if you're worried about your, your, your run coming up, you still got time. All right, these, those three are all running from me. Kind of, I was kind of pausing there to see what they were doing. Yeah, they're gonna, I'm actually gonna try to uh, do that, take a green. That worked out. Just run out of this. Uh, that way that duck uh, that was off to the, to the uh, to the right, uh, to, the, to my left, it would uh, join in the fight, and then we can use the eye frames to get back by him. Quack. All right, so this mole is the same as the first two. Um, whoops, uh, life up you. Whoops. I'm gonna freeze beta, not alpha. And that's why we queue up the, f the life up with Nesk. A little safety net. And we're, we'll be fine. Very nice. All right, so that was uh, that was definitely that was Mole Cave. Uh, definitely one of the uh, the big potential run uh, places where the run can, can go uh, can go to the south. Uh, but we I finished Mole Cave. Of runs response, down right? here. We have a little bit of inventory management to do. Gonna drop the Sandlot bat, drop the refreshing herb, uh, drop the Holmes hat. Drop the pop gun and drop this Holmes hat. Use the exit mouse to get out of here. That's so basically the idea behind the inventorying is we're trying to free up as much space as we can for an upcoming shopping sequence. And we're going to be buying a lot of explosives to get us through in the next uh, 35 40 percent of the game until we get to deep darkness. So, fuzzy pickles! And if I have the opportunity, I, w I am going to try to take one butterfly. So Polly gets some uh, side points before Shroom. Thank you, old Rusty. No one expects the butterfly. Thankfully, the, the in, in these uh, couple, these couple of tunnels, they're, the butterflies are are pretty. Uh, Pretty common to get at least one, particularly towards the end of the second tunnel. That's a probably a good 70% butterfly spawn. Yeah, they're very common in there. We didn't find any buried treasure, but we did find a diamond. So that diamond's going to allow us to free up the Runaway 5 yet again. Yeah, so we're going to use that diamond. We're going to pay off the uh, Runaway 5's debt. And then bail him out yet again. So I will go ahead and force one butterfly just so, because I want the side points for Shroom. Right, we didn't have to, it just happened to spawn right in our path. So I seal approval for that one. Extra cranky man there. Any any of uh, any humans that are kind of blue tinted skin, those are enemies. The blue tint is uh, being corrupted by Gygus. Is that they're corrupted by Gygus? 
You actually have to go above the desk here, which is kind of a pain. If you go yeah, below, if, she'll if, be like, if, you give her the, if you give her the diamond from uh, in front of the desk, she'll, she'll tell you, come around back so I can take, take a closer look at it or something in effect that says the same thing. Uh, so we bail out the Runway 5. We're like, uh, just do this one last show and get out of here. So we're going to watch the Runway 5 show. Uh, it's another yeah, this one is substantially thing. shorter than any of the other. Yeah, cranky, cranky, cranky guy, uh, unassuming local guys, cranky ladies, extra cranky la ladies, new age retro hippies, abstract art, uh, dollies, clock, mole playing rough. Uh, there's all sorts of fun enemies in this game. For certain dollies, yeah, are fun. Just seeing the beginning of it, it's it's only getting weird. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, quickly top off my water real quick while we play uh, Runaway Five Show. I'll be right now. So coming up, it's going to be a, a big shopping sequence in department store. It's our, our first access to big bottle of rockets and super bombs. Uh, so we're going to max out our cash and load up our inventory with the, those explosives. Yeah, and just just a friendly reminder: make sure that you do stay hydrated. Make sure that you uh, are keeping your fluid intake up. Uh, don't want to get dehydrated during these longer runs, um, longer streams. Uh, that could be uh, causing health fair. problems. So just. Uh, friendly PSA there at this time, so uh, to good health. There's our introduction to Venus, we'll be seeing her. Well, uh, we'll be seeing Venus again in another uh, hour and a half or so. We will definitely be taking a safety save in the department store. This is definitely one of the uh, worst, uh, what, probably the last big RNG hurdle uh, uh, for a good portion of the run. So, yeah, the safety save after department the store is just notoriously difficult. You know, easily, easily kill your. I'm gonna pull out ten thousand bucks, and we're gonna be buying a. Uh, 15 super bombs and 10 uh, big bottle rockets. So we'll be spending uh, a good uh, 7,000 of it. First, I'm gonna do thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell the platinum band for 1949. I'm gonna put five super bombs on uh, on Jeff. So the idea here is to kind of back end fill, so to speak, uh, the inventories because there is a heavy amount of lag, uh, depending on how many things are in Ness's inventory, you want to fill Ness last. Uh, so we're filling up Jeff, Paula, and then Ness to avoid uh, having too much lag with noting, loading Ness's inventory every time. Yep, that is exactly correct. The, num the amount of lag increases the number of items in, in that person's inventory increases. So five uh, bombs on uh, Paula and Jeff. Now we'll buy seven uh, PPRs on uh, Jeff and then three more on Paula. Hey, Hunter. Some of the items on Paula are just going to be used for later. Paula's actually just about to leave, uh, so we're going to throw some things on her that we're going to get later. So she's just going to kind of hang on to them for us. Yeah, she's just going to kind of uh, carry some uh, uh, BBRs on Jeff for later. Because only Jeff can use uh, bottle rockets in this game. All right, now we're gonna buy five super bombs on uh, Ness last. Like like uh, Temple had said, it uh, reduces inventory lag while we're doing this. Yeah, this game, the way the tech system works, it actually prints every single character, so it, it takes time to process every time, and 
just so much lag. Alright, so there we go. That's uh that's our first big shopping trip. Now, I guess it's not quite our first. We have the one the one with all the burgers, but big shopping trip that'll get us all the explosives we need uh the next 30% of the game and we're absolutely gonna be making a safety save right here. Yeah, this is it. You have to make the save, or it's just foolish not. Yeah, it, it, it would be, uh, like the one before Boogie Tent, that's one that I think you could at least justify. The ones before Three Cave and before Department Store, nobody can really justify not making the safety save. So first little move here, we're going to exploit some of the presence movement. We're going to do the old Department Store Tango. And uh, avoid these presents on the second floor. Uh, those presents just move in a straight line, so they're very, very easy to work around in those big areas. All right, now go going up to the fourth floor, and this is this is just pure RNG. What we get, like if we get uh, two musica, we get a uh, two records and a musica. We could easily be just uh, resetting. Yeah, it looks like we got the full try. Just kind of throwing. Yeah, we got the RNG to the wind. Yeah, we are almost certainly going to be uh, loading up our save file here, just giving a fair warning. Oh, maybe not! Is that... Fair enough. Uh, I don't mind burning a BBR, we have an extra one, really. I guess for a three enemy fight, getting out of the three enemy fight, that's already good. Yeah, for sure. That that fight is is rip. Like yeah, that's usually it. that's usually death. It's by sheer happenstance and the grace of our own Jesus that Ness outsped the music and killed it with the with the uh, super bomb. That was very lucky. Yeah, that that one saw on our own Jesus. Well, you'll go to heaven. Now that we have big water rockets and super bombs, these these bosses are pretty straightforward. Fire doesn't kill anybody, it does kind of hurt him a bunch, though. Yeah, you can't cast Freeze, low. which can be hurtful, but we got the fire. Yeah, the Freeze what you gotta worry about, because the Freeze uh, does have a chance to kill you and solidify you as well. Yep, that is Temple on Commentary, Arithium. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, life out both characters to full. So I am one uh, BBR short. Um, but that's okay because we do have at least one that's kind of extra, kind of if because you can get by with with uh, really up to two less, but realistically one less. And if we don't if we don't have a BBR for Mondo Mole, it's not the end of the world. Like it just we just bash out Mondo Mole and we lose like. Eight seconds. Yeah, not a, not a big deal to burn an extra big bottle rocket. Yeah, much better than uh, dying for sure. If we if we had died, I would have just loaded up the save rather than losing half the money and uh, the resource other resource that we've used. So we're gonna go to the cafe now uh, to hit the next trigger. We're gonna talk to this lady here. It's uh, another plot trigger to uh, make Everdread spawn here. Talk to this NPC. I'm gonna give this kid a protractor. We don't use the protractor for anything completely useless, and he's happy to have it. Yep, it just happens to be... We do need the ruler for Monkey Cave, but the uh, protractor, we don't need at any point. So we've we've left it in the inventory. I guess we, that turns out to be an item we can give to that guy to get, be able to talk to Everdread. He won't take just anything. It has to be something. Uh, I don't know specifically what it is, but he won't take certain things in Protractor. What? Yeah, like he wouldn't take the ATM card or the sound soundstone or, or certain key uh, storyline items, for instance. As much as I would like to get the soundstone out of Ness's inventory, so we could use it for literally anything else. Now but we then how do you get to magic? I'm gonna hope that we get the pump skip, but uh, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, it took me a little bit too long. So this guy, uh, this guy uh, doesn't do anything for four turns. He just kind of throws a bomb every fourth turn. So we can usually get away by the second or third turn, as you saw there. 
right, so that clock, uh, fortunately, is not going to bother us. We talk to this guy. So in Moonside, one of the things is that uh, yes is no and no is yes. This is one of those areas you, you play this game normally and it's it's very confusing and hard to find your way around, but in a speedrun, we just kind of blast right through. We're just going to hit exactly what we need to hit in order to advance. Night pendant key key item we have to grab that that's going to be vital for the rest of the yeah it gives you 100 percent flash resistance up here's dad uh, i mean it's so about dad calls on every two hours yeah it's about 201 15 is when you usually get that so i'm not doing too too far behind my pb uh, i'm gonna grab this secret herb Secret Herb's kind of a safety for the fight. I did about it. <laughs> Wrong skip game. A little trick. A little, little uh, exploit that's kind of been grandfathered into the category there. They can hug that bottom wall, skip some text, and the spawns uh, are not going to be uh, here, so we'll have a little bit less lag, and we'll skip about 15 seconds worth of text. Yeah, usually the invisible guy following you is saying, Hey, check out my teeth. Hey, check out my eyebrows. My eyebrows are connected. My teeth is golden. It's like kind of telling you, Hey, go go talk to the guy. I'm going to check this. This is uh, Evil Manny Man. He's got about uh, 850 health. So we're going to do a super bomb and we're going to do a VPR. Hopefully, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, that was a little bit low. So we can use Psy while we're par par paralyzed. Uh, it's fine. I I'm gonna be a couple BBRs short. Um, I might not have one for Guardian General, um, but it's not the end of the world. Um, all right, so there we go. That's kind of the first of a couple encounters we'll be having with the evil Manny Manny statue. So again, just a whole, whole lot of story advancement going on here. All right, just checking to see how many super bombs I had left. Um, we got three on each character, which is fine. Super bombs are going to be used for clumsy robot coming yeah. up. Typically, you only need four, sure that, but I want to make sure I had at least five. Uh, yeah, five is uh, four is is typical, but it is likely enough that you get that you need five and. Clumsy is a, is a fight we can't use BBRs on, we can't use Rockin on, it just will not hit. Like, BBRs literally cannot hit Clumsy. He has way too much speed, and yeah, Rockin's mischance is through the roof. And he's also got a side shield as well. Just to make it even more, you can't use Rockin on that fight. So now we're heading to the monkey cave. We've kind of been hoarding a bunch of items uh, as we've gone here just to get through the tedium that is monkey cave. Yep. So that's why we've had like a, that's why we got like the, the uh, skip sandwich in uh, the cultist sanctum. We got the protein drink in Grapefruit Falls, the picnic lunch in uh, Mole Cave. We've held, held on to the ruler. Uh, so yeah, those are all uh, gonna be used here in uh, monkey cave. So that'll free up some more inventory space going into Monotoli building, which is the dungeon after this. You can actually mash the wrong button here and end up back in three, so it's very important to uh, Yeah, you mash, want to mash, mash A, three, yes. you don't want to mash B. So this is going to ask you, do you want to get off here? So you want to say, yes, you do want to get off here, otherwise you're going on to three, and then if you keep saying yes, you'll, you'll go to two soon. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give that to, I'm going to give the uh, pencil eraser to Jeff, just to, number one, get it out of Ness's inventory, and also he's paralyzed, so I can't use items with uh, Ness right now anyway. So left, right, so we're going to talk to this guy. Uh, yes, and there's a skip sandwich. I'm going to talk over in this corner. I'm gonna pick and watch. We need to go in here just to grab a pizza. So these guys yeah, usually you run, can't. But we do want to be mindful not to accidentally trip a fight. Uh, usually you can't use items when Ness is paralyzed, but because these guys just ask for it in your inventory, it's fine. to her to get the, uh, this gives us the, uh, the king banana that we need for man, key man, also known as monkey man. As you can see, Ness is kind of moving really weird, taking these, like, super long strides, and that's just kind of a, a trigger that, because he's paralyzed. Ness has got his strut gone. more item we're going to grab here it's going to be the bag of dragonite these things are way too powerful to pass up so we'll be grabbing this for yeah, later there's, there's a couple that we that are too far out of the way to get there's uh there's going to be three we're going to pick up we're going to pick up one right there we're going to pick up uh another one where's the second one? i know we pick up one in magic and i can't remember where we'll get the second one i'm going to despawn that That's okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, you should know that. Uh, me of all people. Yeah, you of all people should definitely be the one to know that. But yeah, there's one in Pyramid and one in uh, Fire Spring that we don't pick up. Because they're a little out of the way. Also, we get a full heal from Talarama when we talk to him. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab this a uh, couple life noodles. A couple life noodles That's is a, a healing seat. omega. It uh, it cures any status ailment, including death, and re restores you to full HP. So uh, there's not too many of them. Uh, we have access to, but that's one that's uh, right there in the way and definitely a, a worthy safety item with some of the stuff that's coming up here in a, in a little bit. Anytime you can grab a life noodles for free, definitely. Yeah, there's, uh, I'll, I'll probably even get, I'll probably, uh, if I can't even get the one in deep darkness, if it's not too uh, obstructed by enemies, and I, especially if I've already used one or two of them. So we're going to go off to the right just to despawn the mole playing rough. So we'll be learning teleport here. Uh, not only teleport is powerful because we can get to town to town very quickly, but it's also going to allow us to exploit some enemy skips later on in the north. Yeah, uh, in, uh, particularly in Deep Darkness and in Dark Onet, we'll be using it. And also somewhat in uh, Lost Underworld, we'll be using teleports to uh, get by enemies. Uh, So when you're teleporting, enemies can't aggro you, so you can kind of teleport around them and then kill the teleport before you teleport before you out, and it lets you uh, pass by alone. We're going to teleport to Force Side, because now we got Monopoly Building, which is, which is yeah, Scrob is another place, for sure. Scrob and uh, also Summers, to a lesser extent. I'm gonna actually take a safety save here. Uh, it not this is not a particularly threatening place because I am short on uh, BBRs. 
Yeah, in case you get into a fight. Uh, so we're going to be seeing skip sandwiches used here to skip a few fights. Um, they allow you to run faster than the enemies and you can kind of get into the door before they hit you, hopefully. Uh, let's distract. But yeah, um, I really don't have the BBRs to deal with uh, if, I get, if I get RNG botted and it's just a long fight. So I may... Uh, he decided to take an intentional death and start over from all until building. I, w I wouldn't bother um, if I had a couple more BBRs, but since it uh, just happened that we were a little bit low on him, uh, I figured the safety save is probably, you know, discretion being the better part of Valor and all. Uh, so we're going to go and use our uh, DX right there. Get by that door. Skip. This one's based on our... Alright, he was in a fine position. We can go around this guy. Kind of jut through there. Nice uh, little exploit there. All skips, very nice. That was a very good Monotoli building. Everything went fine, and now this is a uh, clumsy robot. So this is where we need our bombs, because bombs don't have a missed chance. Unlike uh, BBRs. Uh, super bomb, super bomb. Awesome. Clumsy actually has a move set. It says he eats a bologna sandwich and he maxes out his HP. It's actually a lie. It's bologna. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, bologna sandwich indeed. Oh wow, I got the three bomb. Three bomb? I... Yeah, he's got uh, about 940 health, so it's possible to three bomb him. Uh, the average is four, and sometimes uh, it takes five bombs. So I did take some damage. There's a there's a three second or so. Uh, there's a three second or so uh, time, say, with uh, tech skip, but you do lose the full heal. And so because I did take some damage in uh, that fight, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not do the skip and take the full heal, which, like I said, will cost a few seconds, but he'll heal, heal up uh, Jeff and Ness before uh, uh, before we get to... Um, Before before we get to Shroom. Yeah, Earthbound is the sort of game where I can question how a robot eats a sandwich. But yeah, bologna sandwich indeed. Yeah, because a sandwich would totally uh, heal a robot. It's definitely not worth looking into questioning those things. Just let it happen. Video game logic, we don't question it. Oh, we do not want to hear the whole story again. We go to Mashing B, so we can make sure you say no. You want to hear the story again? No. <laughs> it's actually a cool little mechanic in this game. You can, if you mash B, or select it'll automatically choose no. You don't have to select it with the. All right. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh... do that move the uh, move a super bomb from Jeff on to Ness because he doesn't really need super bombs any uh, Jeff doesn't really need super bombs he's got bottle rockets every fight where he would use a bomb will have him use a rocket at this point there's nothing else that we strictly need bombs for like you know the clumsy um, as well as uh, moving this the, the uh, BBRs that Paul was storing on to Jeff just because remember Jeff's the only one who can use them there's Porky. He's like, ha ha, uh, I'm getting away with the helicopter. It's like, la la la. Yeah, just tons of more plot advancement here. Like, hey, it's me, Porky. Remember, I'm the evil guy. I'm going to do bad things. And Paula's going to have a little daydream here. And it's just furthering the story. Yep. Yeah, so a, uh, so just, just to explain, um, how the mechanic, just, uh, so we do have a couple minutes here. I, I w w want to go just a little bit in, into, uh, greater detail of kind of the mechanics of some of the, uh, the, uh, explosives, um, and, and stuff. The, uh, the bomb, the, the regular bomb, uh, that we, yeah, we got one of, um, we don't use too much of them. They do what, 90 uh, damage plus or minus 50%. 
uh, super bombs do 270 plus or minus 50 percent and they can do uh, splash damage to um, enemies on either side uh, of those encounters which is why I throw the super bomb at the enemies on this on that in that music gun to record fight through two uh, super bombs on the sides so that the, both of those super bombs would splash damage the the middle guy um, uh, bottle rockets are 120 plus or minus 25 percent and they have a mischance based on the enemy speed and on Jeff's speed. A uh, uh, BBR is like a bottle rocket, except it's five chances to hit. It's like firing five consecutive bottle rockets. It just sums up the damage. And then multi bottle rockets, which we get later, are, are like big, big bottle rockets, but instead of five bottle rockets, they're 20. So in the Japanese version, they're actually called uh, Pencil Rocket, Pencil Rocket 5, and Pencil Rocket 20. So uh, just a little bit of in-depth mechanics talk because that's the kind of thing that I'm known for talking about when I do these streams is just kind of like really dissecting the the internal mechanics of exactly how things work um, and something you can so something definitely that uh, you get to hear from me a lot I definitely I, know more about the the details of the stats than I do I don't, I don't know any of those yeah, I spent a, way too much like, time. Yeah, on, to some... Way too much time on Starman.net. This is, unfortunately it is required, we can't, the game disables teleports while, uh, while it's set up for us to just, uh, there, oh, there's a monotoly text skip something or other that can allow you to skip this, but it's convoluted, it's probably not even allowed in the category. It requires a lot of things to go really weird in order to skip this, and it's definitely not worth doing, uh, certainly not in a marathon run. We'll just take the, uh, take, and we're gonna kind of hug the wall there. There's a voter trigger up near this, the circus tent. We went higher up. And, uh, the Runaway Fives guy says that he mentions perhaps we would left a gadget or device. So we're gonna go back here where we, uh, where Jeff crash landed, where we were locked up in jail. And the Skyrunner has been mostly fixed. And at this point we can go ahead and, uh, Jeff's gonna fix the finish fixing up the machine, and um, I'm gonna say what you do. We can go back to Winters, and uh, we're gonna go to Doctor Ananoth's lab. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead um, since I won't have a I, I won't have a break for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the restroom because it's another minute and 45 seconds or so. So I'll be right back. So what this uh, is all leading to, uh, we mentioned earlier, you, there's two sanctuaries you can't skip or save until the end of the game. Uh, it's one in four. Uh, we are heading to four right now. Uh, Shroom is the fourth sanctuary. And uh, once we defeat Shroom, we'll be able to uh, continue the story. And, uh, get on up. Shroom can be somewhat dangerous fight. Uh, Especially with where we're uh, level wise. Uh, but the, the BBRs and the super bombs should help us out quite a bit. Uh, the shroom can make some, actually, will always make someone feel strange first turn, um, depending on who that is, uh, jurisdicts, how, how Skies is going to handle. is made felt strange it's it's not so bad you can just kind of skip her turns if Jeff is feeling strange it can be a little tricky he can fire his rockets back at the party uh, 
Uh, so we'll just see who gets felt strange here, and that'll then we'll tell how we hint. Yeah, probably Ness is probably the best character to get estranged, and Jeff yeah, probably yeah. the worst. So I will I will have Paula use a freeze beta on turn one because that'll have a twenty five percent solidify chance. Uh, she'll generally be able to outspeed Shroom, and if he, if we do get the solidify, he'll skip his first turn. And we won't have to worry about strangeness, and we just wail on him with. Uh, with explosives. Hey, it's King Butterfly up there. We're gonna say hi, King Butterfly. So we're gonna go around this way, I guess. Just looking for a path that doesn't have too many bears and cave boys. We can use a teleport alpha as well if we need to. But I didn't really have a good line. And you don't wanna accidentally teleport to Onet, that would be really bad. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and our super bomb. Freeze off. Oh, Everyone Jeff, what are you doing? Uh, so Jeff being felt strange, it's definitely not good, but it's you don't have a huge chance of that bottle rocket being turned back around. Oh. And it'll only hit one person, so it's not the biggest deal if that bottle rocket gets turned around. I really can't use any more, uh, any more bottle rockets. I just don't have enough. There we go. Yeah, we you want to save them. So I want to say, I want to have three, I want to have at least, I need at least three left. I need one for Shatterman, one for Guardian General, and one for Kraken. Yep. Like if I if I don't if I don't have any left for Monomol or whatever, it's not a big deal, but um, but having at least those three is definitely a plus. Thankfully you, you see that Jeff was feeling funky, that means he's just gonna kinda fire at somebody. Thankfully he fired at Shroom. Um, but uh, he easily could have fired it and blown somebody else up. That 100 damage uh, BBR was definitely not good. It means he missed four out of his five chances to hit. Remember, it's, uh, BBRs are five rockets, and I mean, I only hit one of them. Yeah, I don't like, uh, yeah, so I don't like the, my line. The bottle rockets. Yeah, this is kind of a bad line. Um, the bottle rockets. Um, so since they fire individually, like Skaz was saying, uh, BBR is five, MBR, multi bottle rockets, 20. Uh, the game actually fires each rocket individually and runs those fires against a speed stat every time. So once we're able to cheese our speed uh, stats a bit later, uh, you're going to see bottle rockets uh, be exploded quite a bit. Yeah, the, the end game strategies will we'll get an accessory, or sorry, uh, uh, arms, armor, an increase. Is it arms or I think it might be body, but anyway, we'll get, we'll get an equipment that increases the speed stat by 40, which is... Uh, 40 per which translates to 40 percentage points on each of the 20 hits of the MBR. So that's on average like going to be like 900 extra damage compared with no item whatsoever. Uh, here in just actually just a little bit after we got a couple more fights and then we'll get access to uh, uh, Crystal Triumph, which are a weaker version and get 15 speed instead of 40. So normally, um, so I'm going to do things a little bit different than how I would normally do them. So normally I would uh, go get the Stoke Club number, then I'd go buy sandwiches, um, and then I'd go to Stoke Club, i get Pooh, and then go off to Kraken. But I'm actually going to buy the sandwiches after Pooh. I'll just buy the normal ones I would get. Um, and the reason why I would do that is because at the sandwich shop there is a, uh, there is a, a phone and I can call. Uh, so I'm kind of going to go with an older, an older strat to allow me to... Uh, take a pretty uh, not out of the way uh, phone call to, to save before Kraken. This is a kind of... Yeah, Kraken safety set. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a, a, a boss that can easily uh, go wrong. Generally, he's usually not that bad, but he can definitely go wrong. If he, he gets an early fire off, then just, he can just be really uh, up a creek. Uh, player namer incentive, player, player naming incentive. I'm just gonna go with this. Uh, nobody, nobody, uh, 
gave me an incentive for that. So we'll just do the normal butt. A single butt. Single butt. Which is what I typically do. Yeah, we'll do kind of kind of the older strategy, which is to go into uh, and see the museum. enemy skip exploit with the tele. Yeah, there's a so we'll go and we'll call the stoke club here in the museum. So this is a little bit of an older strategy since it's going to be easier for allowing us to uh, do a crack and safety save. Actually, I actually like these older sandwich. Yeah, we it, it, it would seem like we could call because we'll have to go to the uh, we'll have to go to the museum anyway um, after we get poo. The reason why we can't call from the museum after we do Shattered Man is that there will be a phone call that a whoa, hold on. Not cool. Uh, but there will be a phone call. Somebody, some guy will be calling the museum telling him about something extraordinary in uh, uh, the Dinosaur Museum in Forsyth, which will take more time. Because audio having issues again, so I apologize. Oh, Discord. <laughs> Discord's just being a little uh, Discordy. <laughs> it is sowing some Discord. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba I know, that was, that was awful. But I don't feel bad at all, because these sort of puns are my speciality. Maybe Rage. I'm just using it on the browser because I don't want to download and try to work that out. I'm on the desktop. Alright, so I'm going to grab a... Uh... I'm going to grab a brain food lunch and a couple life from those there. Is it no baby rage here because it's not Ligaya? Yeah, there's definitely some time for baby rage in Ligaya. It's actually two points that we'll be spinning. Well, actually we're doing Ligaya 2 because Ligaya 1 is a horrible glitch fest that's not appropriate for this marathon. Also everybody say hi Star Master. Bye Star Master. We shall walk right by you. Yeah. Lagaya New Game Plus is a horrible glitch fest that is totally not appropriate for this marathon, but it will be in Limit Break, so, uh, you get to see it, uh... before too long. So now for something every, you know, young kid needs to experience an existential crap. Yeah. So, uh, time for some, actually, pretty disturbing content. So disturbing content warning, um, here's the ghost is going to possess Poo for the rest of the game. This is kind of the part of the run where most people go, man, this, this game's messed. This game's kind of messed up, yeah. I actually thought it was cool as a kid. I, I, I was into martial arts as a kid, and they do all this stuff all the time. So it's like, oh, this is pretty. Also, uh, here in just a couple minutes, we will uh, kind of push the boundaries of PG-13. Because of my choice of names, it makes something really funny. 
it was kind of by happenstance, but it was uh, pretty funny to point out. Um, and so we'll, 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 we'll have some, uh, some uh, innuendo there here in just a couple minutes. Not the last time we'll be in Delon. We'll be coming back here later for we got a, we got a sanctuary to take care of here in an hour and change. Gosh darn it to heck, fudge sickles. That's that that's that's my common retort is fudge sickles. So yeah, here's the here's our uh, innuendo li line. My name is S. I am Princess, the servant of D. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Yes, Princess, the servant of D. Now we're gonna go to the museum. I'm gonna walk up here just in case there's any spawns uh, behind the trees. Oh, we need to go check out the uh, hieroglyphs. Bribe the guy with the tiny ruby and have a shadow. You can technically skip these, but they give a lot of money, um, so I'm not going to bother with that. So, so it's two freeze betas and a, uh, a BBR. You guys have about 700 health apiece, thereabouts. Did not get a mummy wrap, unfortunately. Ah, no mummy wrap. Tartar sauce! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, usually it's like fudge sickles or rats or... Darn it, or... Gosh, dang it. Yes, the D was solidified. Oh my. Oh my. We have to read the hieroglyphs. So uh, when we're leaving the uh, when we're leaving here, uh, the phone will be ringing. Uh, that's the way because there's a there's some text uh, there. So that's why we can't use the phone call right there where I want. So we're gonna go get our our uh, skip sandwiches right now. I'm not gonna load up. Uh, I'm not gonna load up uh, Pooh's inventory with them. I'll still do the winter shop just because I'm not used. To, I'm not. I'm not actually sure what the old uh, sandwich buying route is. The one where you actually fill that poo right here. Okay, let's let's see if that helps the audio. Okay, that seems better. So we're gonna give uh, Ness and uh, Ness and Pooh each a super bomb before we save here. Uh, 
Uh, but now it's time to go ahead and fight Kraken. There's a photo trigger near there. It shouldn't be able to. You, it's it's down just to the left of this guy. So we're gonna uh, gonna take the uh, the ride. So this is kind of going from uh, Italy or Greece, uh, kind of European uh, Mediterranean. We're gonna go to Scarabo, which is basically uh, Egypt. A little Mediterranean ride here. Yeah. Taking a trip on the boat across the Mediterranean Sea. So Kraken can definitely be a pretty deadly fight. Uh, didn't get the mummy wrap, so I imagine the strats will be uh, freezes and super bombs mostly. Uh, I'll do uh, super bomb, super bomb, uh, BBR, super bomb. Right, and BBR. I forgot about that. Definitely want to use a, a super bomb there. Or sorry, a BBR on Jeff. Because I, I, I do actually have the uh, one extra, like because I only used two on. Uh, I only used two, and then ended up using two. Uh, uh, BBR is on Shrew and kind of allocate three, so. So it's, uh, we'll, we do have uh, one extra, so we're back to having one for uh, Monomol if everything works out. Kraken has several, several moves that can be pretty hurtful to the party, but Hopefully a couple we'll of see turn kills, so we'll see what they Crash and Boom Bang. Those are the two that are not too bad. Uh, uh, super Bomb. Whoops. Don't want to defend. BBR and uh, Super Bomb. Fire. That's what you don't want to see. Uh, we're going to have at least one, at least one dead kid. Well, maybe not. No, we, we actually didn't. No dead kids. Nice damage rolls. Yeah, that get, getting having um, Jeff go last was definitely a godsend there, uh, since Jeff's uh, super uh, BBR takes more time to go off than the, the bombs do. So that was definitely a fortuitous uh, speed roll. Uh, or Jeff going last. So uh, I'll have to heal up the party. Um, I'm gonna use Poo to heal. I'm not gonna use Jeff because, or not gonna use Nasty. I'm gonna use uh, Jeff. I'm gonna use Poo's psychic points because his psychic points are less valuable. We're gonna come up on Pyramid where we're gonna be using a lot of uh, paralysis and hypnosis with Ness's psychic points. So his psychic points are actually uh, pretty val valuable, and I don't really want to burn any uh, extra that I don't have to. Poo doesn't have a lot of psychic points, but. His are just not as valuable right now. They will be much more valuable later when we get like star storms and freeze beta, uh, freeze gammas. But right now they're uh, just a lot less useful than. Uh... Yeah, you're really trying to conserve Ness's psychic points here for the pyramid. Oops. All right, so. Yeah. So we're going to go to this dealer right here. We're going to buy Crystal Charms for both Paula and Jeff. Uh, the idea for the Crystal Charms, uh, the one on Paula is going to help your speed for running away, and the one on Jeff is going to help his bottle rocket damage. Yeah, so they're 2 defense and uh, 15 HP. They also give you resistance, 100%, 99%, or no, it is 100% resistance to paralysis and diamondization, which also uses the paralysis uh, vulnerability stat. So that actually is relevant in a few places, the paralysis uh, immunity. So we're going to have to dance in front of the Sphinx. Uh, the hieroglyph tells you what to do, just kind of dance in this star shape. Definitely not satanic at all. <laughs> so the door opens. We, we, in order to avoid a photo monitor, we're going to kind of stand right here in the middle, walk up just a little bit, and teleport to Onet. And then we're going to hold up, and we should get in the pyramid and skip a photo trigger. It's one That's of the photo. triggers that you're not supposed to be able to skip, but we thankfully uh, uh, can. And I'm just waiting to get an empty room. You can stutter like past those arachnids, but they're really too close. All right, there we go. It's not a super high spawn, but uh, 
it is uh, high enough that it can take a few chances. Same thing with there with the uh, the spawn there at the top of the stairs. So at this point, we're going to be using a, a skip sandwiches to try to juke enemies. So I'll use the first one right here. I'm going to kind of go around here, avoid that guy. So we're going to try to take a walk that'll uh, avoid. There we go. Avoid those guys. And then we can just go Lots on a of dark skip sandwich form. exploitation. All right, so for these guys, what we're going to do is we're going to do. You know, this guy. Defend, and we're just going to bash. Just in case uh, this doesn't quite kill. I'm just gonna try for the run. The raccoons are not super fast. Uh, whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna life out Ness. And I'm gonna heal up. I'm gonna heal up Paula's Cold mo mostly to avoid the uh, ha got a hacking cough, uh, take four damage text over and over again because there's still a number of fights. Yeah, fudgicles. So both types of hieroglyphs are 100% weak to uh, uh, hypnosis, uh, and the snakes are also 100% weak to paralysis. Unfortunately, I am too uh, too low on uh, Pooh's side points because of all the crack and healing I had to do. And I didn't get the green either, that sucks. So I'm and sometimes to... you can push a green swirl there, but it just didn't work out. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the I'm just gonna go for the blind run at this point. Um, the the shattered men have too much HP. Like they don't even die to to. Uh... needles just as an added safety so now we're gonna fight guardian general and after guardian general who are who and jeff can both they they're not needed their services are no longer needed after guardian general so so guardian general fight uh, we're gonna defend uh freeze uh bbr uh freeze bbr and freeze yeah surviving with one hp is nice that was a really high, uh, really high uh, uh, BBR there, so we'll get the kill there. <laughs> uh, so that's Guardian General. That's the boss of uh, Pyramid Down. That's a lot of uh, stuff there. We're gonna go and respawn the room. Ah. Nope. I forget that the uh... I was trying to get that little switch down there. Yeah, we're trying to get to that switch, um, but there's uh, enemies of... All right, there we go. Kind of that... Uh... I'm gonna actually grab this. Um, I mean, I probably won't be able to... Oh, oh, I guess I avoided it. I guess I decided it wasn't gonna... I wasn't gonna be getting it. But yeah, I kind of did want to get it because uh, a little bit of more side points never really hurt anybody in Pyramid. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use a there. All right, there's a green, so a free run. Uh, both of those guys are weak to paralysis, so I can do a uh, paralysis omega uh, to get out of that fight. But it is 24 side points to do that. And that's it's not have that many. I do think I have a brain food lunch if it came to it, but still. You got some butterflies coming up potentially. Oh uh, yeah. Oops. Oops again. So I'm gonna do an alpha plus a beta on this guy on the arachnid. So I'm, I'm 
I'm not even gonna bother dealing uh, uh, poo or uh, I'm not even going to bother healing poo or uh, or Jack at this point. So just gonna make sure that our uh, the sandwich is expired. Go around there. Yeah, there's a arachnid, arachnid exclamation point, and then there's a arachnid triple exclamation point. Yeah. So uh, it's gonna suck because I'm because my sandwich time is gonna run out. Uh, but I do need to get that diamond band. It sells for. And didn't get the run. I will take the I will take the paralysis omega there. On um, this fight though. Yeah, that diamond band is pretty much two multi bottle rockets. It sells it's money. Actually like two two multi bottle rockets plus two uh, super bombs. It's forty nine ninety nine is what it sells for. Uh, just for safety, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna life up uh, uh, Paula just in case something happens. But yeah, we're almost done. I'm gonna use uh, one last. One last uh, skip sandwich here. I'm just gonna blind run. I'm just gonna go for a blind run here. Might might end up losing time in the end, but uh, this guy just the one. We're almost all the way through the pyramid. I mean, it, it's turning out that it's uh, not gonna be. It's not. It wasn't optimal. I should have gone for the hypno, but no. Nah, three turns, not the end of the world. So this is the end of pyramid. No more fights. This last guy just runs straight up and then go up at the last second, and you'll uh, always avoid him. So who's going to leave the party temporarily? He's going to go off with Star Master. We just got a full heal there as well. So that's why I don't care if people die, because we just get a full heal at the end of Pyramid. Who's going to leave us? He's going to go uh, study and learn uh, Star Storm for a little bit. Yeah, this next section, definitely up there in one of the hardest hardest sections of the run coming up right here. Yeah. Dungeon Man and uh, Sal Scrob is definitely a pain but... Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to head over and start walking this way. And when we inevitably run into some nastiness... Whoops, that sucks. I thought we could get by him. That was... That was very fortunate that we were able to get by him. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, move the key to the tower over to Paula. And we're gonna despawn because there were some spawns there at the beginning. Uh, I'm definitely gonna do some stutter movements here to kind of check for spawns. All right, thankfully that guy's uh, probably just a worthless protoplasm that's running from us. Gotta, there's a lot of lag. There's a lot of uh, stuff that can spawn. Uh, most of it's uh, most of it's not too bad, but definitely there's some stuff that you really got to be mindful for, uh, mindful of, I guess. So this is Dungeon Man, and you remember how uh, about you know way back in Winters I talked about that Brick Road guy, and we'll see him again. We're about to see him again. Um, yeah, there's there's your spoilers and your spoilerinos. Ah, uh, like there's a diamond. We do not want to have any of those. Those are less removed, one of the most dangerous enemies in the game. Uh, right there. They have a very nasty move set. They're really, really threatening. Um, and we're short one character as well, just to add some, uh, some ad added challenge. So, I'm going to talk to... Uh, there's Brick Row. There he is. So, uh, they said I could be anything, so I became a dungeon. Yeah, he's been made into the dungeon man. So we gotta watch out for some possibly unavoidable spawns. I wasn't able to get the uh... these UFOs are really fast, but they are 50% weak to uh, paralysis. So we'll take advantage of that. And so there's, once everything is numb, uh, solidified, asleep, or whoa, what was going on with that, that UFO? For safety, I'll go ahead and just top off Ness's HP. 
All right, um, so here we go. Whoa, fart. That's not good. I did not see the, the presence. I didn't react fast enough. No objection using this VBR on this guy. I better to do that than to worry about. Jeff's last ditch effort, Huckabee yeah. Bar Rocket. Just get out of this fight. And we get a cup of coffee. Yay. And we get freeze gamma as well. Or yeah, freeze gamma. So we'll get a, a free heal here in just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use a stiff sandwich here. There's really no reason to revive Jeff. Nope. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go around this way. Way too many UFOs. Way too many UFOs. Yeah, we'll we'll have a chance. Whoa! Boom. Abort! Abort mission! Abort mission! Dungeon Man has now left the party for good. We do have to make another trip through there, though, so. But we need a submarine and... Ah, I was trying to wait a little bit longer so I could... I should have, uh... These guys are pretty nasty. Hopefully we can get at least one paralysis. We gotta, we, I don't even think we, we have a chance to run yet. Uh, yeah, like, we're probably gonna take a death here, unfortunately. Ah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know full speed are just way too high. Yeah, this, they just got the red and then all sorts of... It's not actually... Like, we lost a thousand bucks, but it's not the end of it. Definitely. Um, it's not so, too bad of a death, honestly. Yeah, given that we, we made it to uh, finding out about the submarine, we did lose a thousand bucks, and that, that can be costly, but... Um, it shouldn't be too bad. So I definitely, uh, I'm going to be pulling out a bunch of money here and we definitely would be safety saving there because if we die once we pull the money out, then that is rip. Yeah, you do not want to die with all this money withdrawn. Because uh, whenever you die, you lose half of your funds on hand. I gotta be mindful not to take any fights because I got I got a nest with no psychic points, and uh, the other kids are dead. Yeah, if you get into any fights, it's pretty tough. Yeah, we're just Almost gonna be relying to on, on R and Jesus uh, taking the wheel, delivering us from the evils of R and Gygus. I got an R and Gygus emoticon in the works, but they still haven't approved it yet. Yeah, Dungeon Man as a as a party member is actually not bad because he can he can solidify enemies and hit him for like 400 damage. Uh, he's got crazy high offense, but still, um, he he does more harm than good because enemies love to run into him and get uh, get into fights with you, which you would otherwise be able to escape. And you can't use teleport while he's part of the party. So, on net, I think he's still a negative. He's more of a pain overall, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. I would agree with that. So we're gonna go down, jump into the uh, return hole, or the, uh, sorry, I guess this is the uh, 
Uh, maybe another day hold. Alright, so no fights. I'm gonna pick up this talisman ribbon sells for 1750. A little extra cash. And a little bit of extra cash for uh, MBRs. So uh, hopefully we don't see any spawns. Okay, so we have to. We're gonna go and revive the party right here. This is a full heal. Right here. And uh, with that, we are gonna take the submarine to deep darkness. Is there a, do you know if there, I, I don't, and I, I'm asking this genuinely, is there a save uh, place in Deep Darkness? Because I would like uh, to. Yeah, the Toucan phone. Yeah, because I, I would like to take a safety save before Deep Darkness is definitely not one of my uh, stronger areas in the game. Definitely one that can easily backfire and cause a lot of uh, shenanigans or uh, bullcrap. Yeah, this is a tough spot for sure. Definitely be taking a, a safety save here. Uh, just so I don't have to worry about going through Dungeon Man again and watching this cutscene again if we, if we die. Because if we die, it's we're, we're, we're kind of in, uh, in, in re rough doo doo. Okay, I'll just go ahead and. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go right about here. We're going to teleport straight across. Bong in the, well, I guess we're trying to bong in the tree, but that's fine. Now we're going to sell... And here's the, where the game breaks the wide open. I'm going to sell the uh, diamond band. Uh, okay, so we're going to buy an MBR. We're gonna sell the uh, talisman urban as well. I'm just accidentally mashing through buy too quickly. There we go. So all these multi body rockets we'll be using for the bosses here on out. Uh, they will be doing huge, huge amounts of damage and just gonna let us steamroll most of the bosses throughout the end here. Yeah, everything's everything's gonna die in one to three multi bottle rockets. Especially once we get our hands on the rabbit's foot, those things just go through the roof. Even even with a crystal charm on Jeff, just that amount of speed is, is a nice boost to those multi bottle rockets. Uh, we got some super bombs for endgame. Those will come in come in use later. I'm gonna buy one more and I can actually that I can truly afford. I can just take out a couple hundred bucks in winters. Because we did lose a thousand bucks uh, to the death. Right, so here you're going to see the teleport mechanic exploited quite a bit. Uh, the kids move really slow through the sludge, so the teleport's going to get us to go yeah, right through teleport. that stuff. Plus, you take damage in the deep, deep, uh, deep darkness. Yeah, the, the 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 dark blue stuff does damage you. It's gonna be a tricky. I'm gonna do a little bit of stuttering. It could that, slip through. Just to set me up for a more favorable teleport spot. Nah, that's not good. Ah, that's hitting an enemy. Yep. I don't actually know what to do with these guys. Uh, just try to kill them. I don't want to burn a, an MDR. Oh, I guess they're super... Yeah. This happened to me previously. I guess they're super... Uh... Well. 
this point, we're just going to try to run. All right, we got away. So um, yeah. what I'm going to do here, there's actually a couple life needles coming right up. Like, literally, this present right here is life needles. These uh, slugs are uh, stutterable. Uh, so life needles use... Oh, I used him on the wrong person. Oh. Well, that was a waste of a life needles. And we're now in another fight. So we might be resetting here. We got we got one chance. These guys do have super low speed. They hit kind of hard, but they do have super low speed. So at least we do have a, a reasonable chance to get away first turn. I say that. So I'm probably just gonna, I'm gonna just take the death. Yeah. Hey. Got away. All right, I guess what I'm gonna do is, I do have one life needles left. I could use it on uh, Jeff for the boss. And that was, unfortunately, we got into those fights. Just kind of my inexperience with the back half of the game is showing a little bit. Uh, what am I hitting? Some of the hitboxes on those trees are ridiculously large. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and life reels up Jeff. Paula's not going to be alive, which is okay. It's not the greatest, uh, so, but it'll get Ness and Jeff some more experience, which is not actually a bad thing. Uh, defend, goods, and we are. So as you can see, 2200 damage. Um, he's got like 1600 health. This is supposed to be a long drawn out fight. He's like, nope, die. MBRs are a fair item, for sure. They are totally fair. They are totally fair and balanced. And by that I mean fairly unbalanced. So Pooh rejoins us with Starstorm um, Alpha at our, at our disposal. So uh, Paula's going to be dead for, until, um, for a little bit longer. She's going to miss out on two bosses worth of experience. But once she has Freeze Gamma, she doesn't really need any, any more levels. There's a couple of good teleports there. I'm uh, just check for spawns. Okay. So we get a quick little peek into Tenda Village here and immediately leave. Yeah, there's nothing we can do there, but we do need to go into the village. Now we're gonna have a call with Apple Kid. So walking, working on the eraser racing machine at Dr. Ananas' lab, and we're going to be like, eh, well, we're going to go there. But uh, then we're going to call from Orange Kid, who we've never talked to, so this whole talk, having to talk to you in ages thing is actually wrong. We've literally never talked to him. And most people, uh, most runners, and by most, I mean everybody but me, would then teleport to Winters and take care of that stuff. But I like to do things uh, very much out of order from pretty much every other runner. So we're going to go to Onet here, and we're going to actually go to the uh, mouse house and think of an exit mouse. That's what's nice about this run. You can kind of really make it your own with the routing and stuff. Yeah, particularly in the back half of the game, there's a, a fair amount of leeway in terms of what order you do things. Once you get to deep darkness, you can really kind of break the game, do things kind of in different orders. But uh, my next objective is actually we go, go to four side. Uh, uh, no, that's right. Teleport to four side. Just need an alpha. It's a nice uh, teleport alpha path right there. Also, I'm gonna get to save. Uh, I'm gonna actually get to save ten bucks because uh, Paula doesn't have to pay for her ticket.
Hey. Yeah, saving that ten bucks. <laughs> yeah, so the teleport alpha is just slightly faster than a beta. So if you can alpha, you alpha. Yeah, it um, saves about beta. three seconds, I think. Yeah, a bit longer for the beta animation. So uh, the phone call after um, after we did Shatterman and, and saw the hieroglyph before right before Kraken uh, was this guy telling us about telling calling the museum curator in Summers and telling him uh, about something extraordinary at the dinosaur museum but we don't actually have we didn't actually have to view that and we don't actually know what the trigger is uh, to be able to do um, four side sewers but uh, at this point you definitely can. Like killing Shatterman and seeing the high relief definitely uh, enables it. We just don't know how much further we can do that. Uh, so we got the Venus show. It's about two and a half minutes. That's the last big input break in the run. So I'm going to do a little bit of stretching. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a quick uh, breather. Go use the restroom. Fill up my water real quick. And uh, this is the last uh, kind of long input break we got during the run. So uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Just munching on a piece of bread right there, so that's why I wasn't talking much. But uh, I'm gonna go back one sweet now. They got the signed banana, which I do have. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Drop the Casey back, which we don't want. Uh, 
Tyler Casey bat. Um, it's the strongest bat in the game in terms of your offense, but it has a twelve. It has a one in four chance to hit. So it's based on the the poem Casey at the bat. He was mighty. He made mighty swings, but he ended up striking out. We'll get, we'll get a, we will eventually get an offensive weapon for Je uh, for Ness that's pretty good. Um, a little bit later, but this is four side sewers. Um, those guys are short range aggro. Normally we'd go up the stairs if you save us a little bit of time. Uh, however, because it's just not an option. back up we're gonna respawn the room should be able to respawn without going back in the room but uh, there we go so uh just kind of walking through i'm kind of making sure to focus on uh can i take it a little bit slow uh, just because you can get some enemies that kind of bunch up on the bottom and you can't really see them just uh, they can they can be kind of tricksy, you know, tr tricksy little uh, hobbitses and trash cans and stuff. Uh, so we'll do the same thing as before. We'll uh, kind of go through this way because the the, the, tra the trash can get us. And not having uh, Paula alive does kind of make this taking fights here a little bit more risky of a proposition because we uh, are losing out on a lot of uh, offensive capability in this dungeon. I mean, we don't need him alive. We don't need her alive for the uh, the boss. All, all we do is uh, an MBR and a Star Storm for safety. So here we go. And MBR, and then the Star Storm is just in case the damage is a little low. He's got 1836. There you go. This this is the chance of the Star Storm. Doesn't matter. Uh, he's got 1832 health, I think, and did 1797. So. Yeah, it's usually it's usually it's pretty consistent to get the one shot, but every once in a while you can be just a little bit off, and the Star Storm does uh, pay some dividends. So uh, who just got Freeze Gamma as well, which is useful because there are some Freeze weak enemies. So we'll get a full heal here, so Paul will get it revived here at uh, the Sanctuary, and. Uh, All right. Oh, uh, so we'll get fully healed here. We're gonna grab this item here, uh, which is the carrot key that we need for uh, to get into Pink Cloud, which is Sanctuary Six. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and exit Mouse out of here. As you can see, we got fully healed there. Uh, Paula is alive again. Uh, hope sickness gets cured. Um, Full HP and side points, all stats, conditions, etc. So the next place we're gonna head is uh, we're gonna head to Winters. We're gonna buy some skip sandwiches at the shop in Winters. Uh, stick them all on Poo, uh, and then we're gonna go and do uh, Stonehenge. So we're gonna go ahead and teleport to Winters using an Alpha, just uh, downright then upright, and we'll just uh, pretty easily uh, teleport Alpha there. Let's go to the shop. I need to pull out about 500 bucks at the ATM. I could have just pulled out a thousand now that I think about it. And we're just, uh, Loading up to our pack mule with some uh, skip sandwiches. Estimates 440. Um, my PB is a 411, but this game is kind of an RNG fest. But yeah, for the first couple of runs, yeah, seven, six or seven hours, I think, for the first couple of attempts is about right. One more and stick it on Paula. I guess she had two left still, so yay. I'm 
even more uh, skip sandwiches. So I'll definitely be uh, using a lot of those. 358 for no manip glitchless uh, world record at 358.49 by Phallix. Do some B buffers there uh, to kind of bring the kids closer together to uh, avoid those spawns because those, those are going to be some pretty nasty enemies. Definitely don't want to encounter them. What the? I, I got totally confused. We don't go there. That's where we go the first time we're walking down here. We just go immediately to the bubble monkey. I uh, I just I brain farted a little bit. Go me. With Manip, it's a 342.04 by uh, Classic Games. I'll just write that down. So we got uh, one more. This is our last Tessie ride here. So everybody say bye to Tessie and say F you to Bubble Monkey. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. Got to keep the language under control. I didn't say the word. Don't worry. Just said uh, just said F. Um, so please don't. Please please Twitch cops don't. <laughs> All right. So a pretty recently discovered uh, little thing we can do is we can just kind of hug the sign, kind of go up here, hug this around here, and this avoids the spawn trigger. Um, where, is, where did I put that pencil eraser? <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Try to keep the, I know, I know, I gotta keep the language. <laughs> Press F to pay respects. <laughs> I gotta watch out. I goofed. I goofed. Everybody, just, uh, I apologize. I got a little carried away. Got a little carried away with my absolute total rage with the with the bubble monkey. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a teleport to get past these guys. <laughs> I am definitely gonna take another safety save here before we start uh, Stonehenge, so... When it's close to 64 glitchless, uh, when you do runs of it, that's when. But uh, any percent with Death Clone will actually be next week. Does uh, that incentive do get met? Watch out! You don't you don't take it from the side or from the from above because there's a photo trigger below the entrance there that you want to avoid. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wait five seconds or so. That's going to despawn it. That should despawn a hundred percent Mook Senior spawn. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that uh, iron uh, pencil statue. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the eraser eraser on Jeff just 
keep Ness's inventory free. Uh, I got the first room. Got, uh, I got a, eh, I took a fight there. That sucks. Oh well. This is SNES. Uh, also available on 3DS, uh, BC, uh, Wii U VC, and SNES Classic. But I am playing this on the original SNES. Alright, so the fir first room was not too bad. Through the one green swirl, which is a free first room run. Other than that, despawns. A couple despawns. Okay, I'm gonna go and despawn that. Start over. It's not on Wii VC, just Wii U. Is it on Wii? I'm pretty sure it's not, but, um... I may be mistaken. I don't think it is. Or it may not have originally been. Alright, so the second room, a couple of despawns getting in. Nothing too bad. The third room really is going to set the tone for Stonehenge. What have we got here? I got some, got some diamonds. Okay, nothing up there in the big portion. That's good. The third room, I, I have found, in my experience, the third room really sets the tone for Stonehenge. If the third room is good, the rest of Stonehenge is going to be good. If the third room sucks, then it's all going downhill. Alright, so we're going to kind of hug this wall to minimize the spawn plates that we hit. Alright, that was, okay, I'm going to despawn that uh, star man there. Alright, that was a really good third room, so that, that bodes well. So now we got the hell room. And I, I got we gotta call it what it is. It is the hell room. It's not the it's not the heck room, it is the hell room. So we're gonna uh, take this fight directly in the front. Starmen have uh, kind of opposite hitbox of what you might think they should have. Uh, and then we're going to use a skip sandwich uh, to allow us to get by that guy. Oh my gosh, that was bad. That was bad. Ugh, at least this. At least it, at least it's not. There's no mooks. Thank, thank the maker. There's no mooks. Okay, we got away. That's not. That's not bad. I, I kind of, I kind of uh, botched that one up. All right, try to despawn that diamond. All right, we're gonna call it the hell room because it, it's not the heck room. It's the hell room. All right, we're gonna force a green here. Walk into the Starman either from below or from the side to get the greens. If you walk in from the back, the best you're getting is a blue. As the Starman just kind of spawns wherever it, it darn well feels like. Alright. I'm gonna wait for him. Alright, got a green. Okay, that was a that was a really good uh, fourth room. All right, so we got through that room. That was a really good, uh, like I said, the third room was good. The fourth room tends to be good. All right, that's good. What do we got here? All right, that's what I was trying to do. Trying to wait so I could uh, kind of clip the, the star man from this from the side there and get a green, get a front to side green. Uh, I got some stuff over there. I'm trying to despawn it if possible. All right, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and do that. There are no more Mook Seniors. Those are the really the super threatening enemy you got to worry about is Mook Senior. Uh, there aren't any once you get into the base, so that's uh, uh, whoops, uh, goods, uh, pack mule sandwich, please. Mm -hmm. All right, got another green there. Not bad. That was a nice base, couple of greens. Really, I can't really complain about that. That I really cannot complain about how Stonehenge has gone. I don't know if it's quite as good as my PV, which is a gold split for Stonehenge, but I can't complain. I cannot complain about that Stonehenge at all. Got a couple diamonds down there. Those are usually Octobots, and you do want to despawn them because um, they do have a chance to steal skip sandwiches. I got some, plenty of extra. I got like three extras, but not uh, really anything I really want to go with. <laughs> so, uh, 
This is the Starman DX, the boss. He's got 1,400 health. Usually dies to a, uh, a um, single MBR, but I will throw the, uh, the Super Bomb for a little bit of safety, just in case we're a little bit low, which we didn't need, but it's always worth it. I think it's worth throwing the bomb. I think it's totally worth setting him up the bomb. It's the old uh, Zero Wing uh, English meme goes. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a very appropriate safety. We should hit 36 on Pooh, I think, which will get us uh, healing gamma. No, we're just a bitch. Just a bit short. Yeah, 1953. It's it's much more likely than not that the uh, Star Starman DX dies, but every once in a while you're a bit short. Yeah, that was a, that was a really nice uh, Stonehenge. I really have no complaints about that. So we're going to talk to Dr. Ananots. And uh, we're going to go and use the Exit Mouse. Ah, that sucks. Sometimes you just spawn on a Mighty Bear 7. Uh, we're just going to try to run. They're not particularly fast, but they are fast enough that uh, you can have some issues. You're not always going to first turn run. And now we're going to go to Onet. we got to actually do two things in Onet. First thing we got to do is we've got to pick up another Exit Mouse, because we're going to need that for Fire Spring coming up before too long. Uh, and then we are going to... Uh, after uh, that, we're going to pick up the Shyness book uh, in the Onet library, which we need in order to uh, be able to talk to the Tendas and get access to Lumine Hall, which is the next dungeon. Lumine Hall or Lumine Hole, whichever. So we're going to teleport back to Onet, because it's a little bit faster to actually teleport back uh, to where we uh, spawn after the teleport than it is to walk uh, back up here. Just a, just by a little bit, but uh, by enough that it's uh, something we do. Now we pick up the shyness book right there. Gutsy Bat, yeah, Bionic Kraken 1 and 128. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this Shyness book and we're going to give that to Paula. And now we're going to teleport to Tenda Village. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I think uh, safety save here is warranted. As Lumine can definitely, there's definitely a, plenty of places where, plenty of opportunities for Lumine to go south. Uh, we're gonna give the Shining Book to the Tenda Village Chief right there. Uh, re read the Overcoming Shining Book to everybody. The we we give the book to uh, we give the book to Paula because the Tendercrowd that we get always replaces the book. So if the book's on Paula, the Tendercrowd will go to Paula. We, it just because of the way the game works. So whatever. So we got a photo man trigger. This is the uh, the third and last photo man trigger that we can't skip in uh, this run. Uh, and then we have second player name. Uh, second chance for player name. And then after that, we talk to uh, the Tenda Chief, and he gives us a Bago Dragonite. Uh, that's our second. We're going to pick up one more a little bit later, so we'll have three of them for uh, Magic Hand. Yep, I got it. I got it. Yeah, he got it. Oh yeah, the Tenda guy got it. Yeah, he's so strong. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. You got to talk to the the Rock. I done uh, once again. I whoop, made a little little mistake there. the The player name comes up at the uh, final prayer, so yes, it does. 
comes up a couple of times at the end game after time is called. All right, so this is Lumine. The top floor just has Foppy, uh, Fobbies with B. They're orange, the big, the big EXP balloons. They're kind of like Foppies that we saw in Belge Base, but they're big, they're, they got more HP. They're orange and they, uh, Right. The bottom floor, however, has some of the nastiest en enemies in the game, namely the conducting spirit, which is uh, which is uh, straight from HFIL. It is an enemy that, that came direct from Hiffle. All right, so it's kind of stair past. I uh, can be very cautious. Kind of want to walk along this way and then over here. And that, I think that should avoid most of the spawn plates. Okay, good. Yeah, I've got a real nice room there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take the four Foppy fight. Just going to Star Storm this. Defend, defend, defend. Uh, Star Storm Alpha. These guys have like 20 in each. If, the, if that, I think they might have less than 300. Yeah, 299 killed them. I want to say Star Storm is 360 plus or minus 25%, so 270 to 450 is the damage range. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and despawn that pack of Fobbies. And again, feeling, still feeling some, some lag. Okay, there's a lot of lag. Alright, there we go. What we got it? Okay, we got some stuff down here, so we'll go ahead and fight Spectre. Uh, and then we'll go get that treasure chest down there. That's one of the most important uh, items in the game down there. Uh, defend, defend, uh, MBR, defend. So just two MBRs. Yeah, Fobbies are worth a lot of experience, for sure. Oh, that's actually a bit low. Uh, he's got 3,084 health. Oh wow, he's actually not dead. Gonna throw a bomb. Uh, you can't uh, side shield him. He's got a side shield, so. Alright, there we go. Let's twitch him. Chat? Yeah, exactly. You're supposed to chat and watch and hopefully have fun. Alright, so I did have to throw an extra uh, BBR, which is not ideal. Usually, to. Um, Two MBRs enough, but I got some pretty craptastic rolls there. Fun. What 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 madness is this? Fun business. All right. So these guys, since we defeated the sanctuary, they all run from us. And this is, like I said, one of the most important items in the game: the rabbit's foot. And we are going to take the rabbit's foot. We're going to make sure we hit give, and we're going to give it to Jeff. Um, So I had mentioned that there was an accessory that gives you 40 speed, and that's it. Thankfully, that that's uh, Conducting Spirit, that, was, that little uh, shine there. One of the most dangerous enemies in the game. Uh, and thankfully, once you defeat Spectre, they're not going to chase you or aggro you or anything. But still, very scary enemy. Don't want any part of those fights. So we have a little input break here uh, to read some text. Yeah, the, the delicious, delicious lag. Mmm, I love that lag. Mmm, so, so, so good, so tasty. Tastes so good. Delicious, spicy lag. Oh yeah, it's so spicy. Ugh. Yeah, there's about an hour left, so my guess is I'm probably on pace for about a 420 flat at this point. 
Uh, just if I if I had to speculate, I'd, I'd guess you're about three eighteen or so. Just kind of roughly guessing what my time is probably three eighteen to three twenty range, three twenty two range. So we're gonna teleport to uh, Underworld here. There is a very very small chance of a hard lock coming up here, but uh, not which is redo the mine again. Okay, didn't have. It's very small chance, but it is something to be aware can happen. Um, if you if you teleport through two enemies that are incompatible, the game will have a boss swirl and then you'll be hard locked. Uh, Underworld, I think, is about the only place where it can happen, but I'm gonna grab a C pendant. We're gonna immediately go ahead and put that on. Yeah, I, I, it's very rare. It's a, maybe a percent or two chance for it to happen. It, it's not something I'm going to change my route around. And, oh, and I did save it in Moon Mine, uh, so I'm not I'm not too worried about how much progress we lose. And we're going to get the Tenda Trigger. Oh, no, no, we didn't. Okay. Uh, if we get too close to that gate, the Tenda will smell the Tenda crowd. They'll take it from us and they'll let us uh, out of the dinosaurs uh, zones and uh, out of the dinosaur area and in, uh, into their little uh, cave of safety. Yeah, this, um, this is... There we go. Yeah, it, it, it's something to be aware can happen. It is rare enough that I don't really pay it much much heed, other than just, just kind of acknowledging that it does uh, it does exist. Just to let you guys know that there is a chance. All right, we're gonna give this cloak of kings to Pooh. So the so I got like three accessories there. The rabbit skull gives three defense and forty speed, which we put on Jeff for NBR chance. The C pendant gives twenty defense. It get and it also gives uh, ninety five percent resistance to freeze, ninety five percent resistance to fire, and uh, one hundred percent resistance to flash. I'm gonna call Dad here and take a safety save before fire spring. Nope, you don't take damage teleporting into walls. You just lose two side hit points to cast teleport. We just we just use explosives and psi. We just use explosives and, and uh, psychic attacks that aren't based on offense or stats. So just like at the start of Starman base, uh, Stonehenge, we're gonna wait five seconds to despawn a 100% spawn over here. And now we've got some 80% spawn rooms, so we're gonna try to despawn. Exploits. We are exploiting the game's mechanics and getting good. It's a combination of exploiting the game's mechanics and uh, getting good. So there we go. We got through this room. Yeah. A lot of bottle rockets. A lot, many bottle rockets were fired in the making of this of this speedrun. Nice, uh, no spawns in that room. Nice green. Excellent. Take a free run, of course. Ooh. We go ahead and uh, I'm gonna force a green. Try to force a green there. Uh, that's gonna allow me to get by uh, these guys, and I should have enough iframes to get into there. Good. All right, just one enemy, that's good. Hopefully it's not the Psychic Psycho. All right, so with a single soul-consuming flame, I think just go ahead and double freeze a, freeze a game of these. This is a glitchless marathon, yeah. This was in GDQ by Ultimo Ice, who's a better runner than I am. I have no shame in admitting that he's one of the best. Alright, nice. Got a green there. We're gonna go ahead and use a uh, skip sandwich there. 
And we didn't get the, uh... Alright, so for this fight, we're gonna go ahead and, uh... Hypno the Elemental. Defend. And, uh, we'll freeze Beta plus Gamma, the, uh, Soul Consuming Flame. Oh, there we go. Take out that guy. And, uh, we got a possession, unfortunately. Uh, but nothing we can do about the possession until, uh, until we just gotta rush over and, uh, we'll probably take that fight afterwards, just by happenstance. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and life up beta here. Freeze gamma, MBR, freeze gamma. And tiny ghost missed, that's good. Going for a solidified chance mostly. Yeah, this is the two stupid dogs is what I call this fight. So after doing 1700 dam uh, 1600 or so damage, uh, uh, Carbon Dog turns into Diamond Dog. Uh, defend. Whoa, I did not mean to spy. Two stupid dogs, yeah. Who remembers that cartoon? Who remembers two stupid dogs? Got some... Whoa! Ah, this is not good. Uh. But we just have to bat. We just have to rock in and magic out the rest of it. HP. He doesn't have that much. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I kind of made some many mistakes there. That's okay. It's actually not bad because it's getting uh, Ness some more HP, or uh, more levels, more experience, so we have a better chance of hitting uh, level 53 for the end game as opposed to 52. Yeah, the thing is, most of the runs that, that are, like, super glitchy, like Super Mario World, Suit Zero Exit, and Pokemon, you know, red, true any percent, those are going to be so short anyway that they're just, you know, are you really going to, how much time is there to really, yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Uh, I'm just going to go, uh, defend... Just gonna freeze him, just... Whatever. Get a little bit more experience. Just, just do that, don't bother. I'm not gonna bother trying to go for the run, which I could do. I mean, it would have been pretty, pretty reasonable run chance, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Yeah, kind of... Kind of sucks that we got into that extra fight, but oh well. All right, at this at this point, we have basically completed the uh, the main storyline, and now we just got Sanctuary Dungeon cleanup. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that Chompasaur where he is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, I think that chop that first chompasaur actually spawned in the wall. But yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and despawn. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to Onet. We're gonna pick up an exit mouse, and then we're gonna go to Delon because we got now. We're gonna go like I said. We're gonna go do sanctuary cleanups. Uh, so we're gonna pick up an exit mouse, uh, and then we're gonna go to Delon. I'm gonna take care of Pink Cloud, and then we're gonna grab, grab an exit mouse. We're gonna go to Tucson um, to do. Uh, don't need, don't need Mr. Butterfly there. Uh, go do Lilliput Steps, which is the dungeon uh, by Happy Happy Village.
So we finally get to use this Terra Key that's been sitting in Ness's inventory for quite a while. And this is Pink Cloud Sanctuary 6. That's where we that's that's what the Terra Key is for us to getting access access to this area. Uh, we should have a pretty good run chance to get everything here. Nice green. I think Paula clipped uh, the, the back. Uh, and that's how I got the green there. That's uh, always uh, always wanted. We'll always welcome to get the greens. I'm not going to be able to dodge that, so just try to maybe go for a green. Um, and if not, at least we're getting a blue for sure at, at worst. Supposedly, these are pretty good odds of running. Supposedly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, heal up Paula's poison. That way, I don't have to worry about um, having that Paula took damage from the poison text boxes uh, show, keep showing up. Alright, so I got a one quick fight here. Hopefully we can uh, get a free run, first turn run. Alright, good. That's good. Alright, now uh, here's the boss, Thunder and Storm uh, of Sanctuary 6. And this is just uh, Defend Defend uh, MBR Star Storm. MBR on its own, usually enough for the Star Storm, just make sure of it. Uh, MBR Star Storm. Usually who goes first to what here. He's got like 2300 health, or I think he's got somewhere around 2300. Yeah, just uh, Blow him up with an MBR. Alright, so that's uh, Sanctuary 6. Like I said, we've got three more Sanctuary. We've done, just did Lumine and Fire Stream, which is Sanctuary 7 and 8. We'd already done 1 and 4. And five, this is six, and now we've got two and three left to do. So these are pretty uh, low level dungeons, and we'll just kind of breeze right through them. Uh, go ahead and use an exit mouse. So there's a teleport beta spot right about there. I don't know exactly where it is, and it's pretty tight. So I go ahead and eat a couple seconds to come down here and do a teleport beta right here where there's a nice, generous uh, spot to do it in. We're gonna grab an exit mouse. We're gonna go to uh, the House of Mouse. In other words, Disney World. And we're gonna pick up, uh, we're gonna pick up an exit mouse, uh, which is gonna be right over here. go to Tucson. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of skip sandwiches to assisticate us in uh, going through Tucson because there's a lot of lag up here with, once we have our full party. But we got to head back to Happy Happy Village. I am for a safety. I'm going to pick up the life needles there in Happy Happy. Just because it is a marathon, it's not too far out of the way uh, to get the life noodles. And there there are definitely situations where it can come in handy to have one more of those. Uh, so this is a little marathon safety. Uh, I normally wouldn't take it, but since I'm a little low on those, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, feeling when you are skipping fast in a taxi car. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty nice feeling, I gotta say. Feels amazing. So once you've... Uh, watch out for those guys. Once you defeated uh, Car Painter, this bridge gets fixed so that you can you can skip part of the walk up and around by the pencil eraser. So part of the uh, the the, the Tucson and Mondomol RNG manipulation gets this uh, life noodles to save some time. Uh, with the uh, the Tucson uh, the the mold the death warp 
but um, like I said, as a kind of little bit as a safety, uh, this this is not far out of the way, and these guys are all going to run from me because I'm much higher level than they are coming in with a full late game party. So it's a pretty easy, uh, pretty not far out of the way. It's like 20 seconds to get it. And, you know, given, like I said, given it's a marathon, I think it's, uh, I think it is a very reasonable uh, safety item to get. I think there's also a Horn of Life in Saturn Valley that's pretty easy to get as well for the end game. So if I really wanted to play Ultra Super Safe, uh, I'm going to walk a little bit wet more of the ways. And I think Paula's got a few skip sandwiches on her. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually uh, start uh, chewing through those. Uh, yeah, she's got three more. Mm -hmm. And see, there's a lot of lag. There's a lot of enemies here. Game's also not built around you having a full party for this dungeon. Like, they're expecting you to have Ness and Paula only. So there's a lot of lag. Yeah, you you could, uh, and it just it's very long. It's 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 a uh, very difficult and time-consuming dungeon if you fight it at the levels. Uh, the two cent mod manipulation does exactly that, so you don't have to come back, and so it ends up saving a few minutes. Saves about four and a half minutes total to do that with the RNG manipulation. But without that, then you kind of have to level up uh, Nest to 14 for paralysis. And it's still a long fight because you got to worry about getting by enemies and just kind of a big hassle. So yes, you could, but unless you're doing RNG manipulation, it is definitely worth uh, not doing so and just... Uh... Whoops, uh, I made a mistake. I, I thought I'd open the menu. Uh, we're going to take this uh, Life Noodles, and I'm going to go ahead and stick it in Paula's inventory, just so it's not in Ness's. Whoops, I went to the wrong place. So, I, I made another I made another goof. Uh, we're not going to Onet here. We're going to Saturn Valley. There we go. So, don't move at all. Just teleport straight away, and you'll 100% of the time, you'll just you'll get it. But it's a really tight teleport if you, uh, if you don't do that, so we're going to do that. But yeah, I could talk to that guy there. I think he still would give me a horn of life if I talked to him. So we defeated Belchbase. The guy we talked the Saturn we talked to to get the uh learn about Grapefruit Falls a couple hours ago. Kinda go around there. There's a photo trigger right by that cup of coffee, so. I wasn't sure if they were running or not, but I just I, I saw one of them was uh uh, was running for me, so I just decided to force the green by running into the guy running from me. Uh, whoops. There we go. Get by the, that guy, this fight. Alright, got a green there, that's fine. Yeah, try to get away, and we did, yay. He's running. Hmm. One last spawn plate in this uh, room. All right, that was a really uh, very clean Milky Well. And uh, this is a nice, simple fight. MBR the Trillion Edge, and uh, that should be a one shot. He got like a. He's not thinking he's like 1,200 health. Very, very consistent. Uh, pretty much always are going to one shot that jerk. Alright, so at this point we've got some inventory stuff to take care of. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Franklin badge, give to you. Uh, the hieroglyph copy we're going to give to uh, her pack mule. Um, and we're going to also, for added safety, I'm going to give the uh, C pen to Ness. Normally I wouldn't do that. Uh, oh yeah, one last very important thing, uh, the rabbit's foot. 
just checking two skip sandwiches, two bag of Dragonite, three super bombs. Uh, we've got the sea pendant, the rabbit's foot. I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, equip the rabbit's foot. But yeah, just for uh, added marathon safety. Um, just in case, the reason why we do, why uh, I would normally not move this stuff over. The uh, I would, the rabbit's foot, you always move. 100% of the time, you always move that over. However, I would not always um, uh, move over this. I would rarely move over the C pendant and not usually the Franklin badge either. The reason why I move them over. Um, C pendant gives you fire resistance and the Franklin badge gives you electricity reflect because uh, there are some Krakens and the Krakens can breathe fire. Uh, which the C pendant basically negates. They can also crashing moon bang, uh, which is a thunder beta effectively. And so you wouldn't take damage from those either. You just have to worry about the tornado. So you'd be pretty safe from their attacks. Uh, and then of course uh, they can I, they, they, they can flash you, but the C pendant and night pendant, they both uh, give you full flash resist. Um, and then, you know, pale green light doesn't do anything because we're not going to do any bu uh, side buffs anyway. So there we go. Pretty much makes us so the shouldn't have to worry about Kraki. We shouldn't have to worry about Karaku-chan. Of Ness's red cap. Hmm, that's odd. Baby bottle, you pointed out, seemed to move a little bit. Hmm. Here we go. Time to, uh, So first thing I'm going to do here in Magic and I'm going to take a safety save because uh, I'm a wuss like that. Uh, and for a marathon, I think this is absolutely justified. Uh, there, say hi to Flower the Flower. There, he, there they are. present we're gonna go ahead and despawn that I said we we're going to go ahead and despawn that not bring it closer to me uh, just a, like that's just a butterfly but yeah I do definitely want to despawn enemies for a little bit oh my gosh can we like actually get the despawns just like smoothie RNG a little bit Uh, using the added speed that we have with the skip sandwich to juke by some of these enemies. Alright, these guys always send a greeting on turn one, and then they'll use crashing boom bangs, uh, which thankfully we have the Franklin badge, so we don't have to worry about those. Just like before, I gotta wait for the sandwich to run off here. Uh, mm -hmm. Grab that magic ant bat.
We'll take care of the poison now uh, after we, uh... Yeah, shock attack gets reflected. That French kiss of death just poisons you every turn. And that's why we're not gonna bother with, uh... Who's in those brownies? Yeah. I don't know. I right, got away. Go ahead and, uh... Healing Bay to get rid of that uh, poison. And it's gonna be another one of the same fights. Alright, got away first try. That's that's what I like to see. Nice juke there. The jukes! Yeah, these guys are pretty fast and they have some pretty nasty attacks. So they can throw bombs or they can throw super bombs. So we're going to fully take advantage of the uh, rolling HP meter there. Gonna go ahead and uh, life up beta to get our uh, ice screen there. Alright, so we're through uh, with Magicant. Now we got the Sea of Eden. So at this point, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead. Whoops. I did not need to do that, but I would definitely want to. Because I put the magic pendant, uh, magic camp bat, and the seat pendant. Just to, because we want we want our we want our seat pendant resistances now. We no longer need to worry about the uh, uh there's dad. Uh, that means I'm about four hours into the run, four or one or so into the run. So we can kind of hug that wall to avoid that Kraken. Let's see where Krakachan number two is. He's over there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna kind of take this long path around here. And we're gonna kind of take advantage of that little uh, thing shooting up there to uh, trap Krakuchan. I'm gonna walk up here while he's kind of trapped. Alright, now we just gotta be mo now it's time for Ness and Nightmare. We're at full HP. So here we go. Ness and Nightmare time. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we get. There are certain very bad patterns. That's a fine one to start with. Glorious Light Turn 1. That's a uh, Flash Omega. Uh, which is basically a turn waste because we are immune to Flash. 672, that's a really high Dragonite. That's really nice. All right, we should be dead. He should be dead either this or the next step. All right, we got it. That was a very, very good fight. Very, very nice fight. All right, so now uh, that's that's Nightmare Down. About four hours uh, or so. So we got about uh, we got about twenty minutes left in the run, if that. We're uh, getting very close to the end. <laughs> World record for this is 34206 by Classic James. 34204 by Classic James. World record for non Manep is 35849 uh, by Phallix. Uh, There's no world record command, uh, command but uh, there you go. I went ahead and uh, just answered that for you. Ashen uh, frame his life. We're going to get the power of the earth. Our stats are going to shoot right the, the Hiffle up. So we'll see if we hit 52 or not, or 53 or not. We always hit 52. We might hit 53. Oh, wait. We do get 53. Uh, probably because we had a couple dead kids for some fights. So uh, Jeff, uh, Ness got an extra 50,000 or so experience. <laughs> So, if we have level 53, which we do, we are pretty safe. Because uh, 53, Ness, the spell that Ness got at 53 was Psy Healing Gamma. So, uh, Ness now has a heal. And at this point, Ness has like 450 Psychic Points. Yeah, so we got Healing Gamma. 
Um, and that means that the end game is it's not free, but it's considerably safer with 53 NAS. He's Yeah, it's actually the unverse. Uh, the, the line was saying about something about the unverse. It was actually a, a, a typo that actually got through copy editing. So it's a, not actually the universe, it's actually the unverse. <laughs> so we're going to go into this uh, phase distorter here. And Dr. Ironuts is like, well, it's not quite working. We need, uh, we need, uh, Zexanite from, uh, Meteorite. So we're gonna go to the Onet Meteorite now. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna equip the uh, Rabbit's Foot back on Ness. Ness has actually just got 20, uh, speed. Uh, from his Magicant levels. So he is really, he's actually faster than every other character, so we're gonna give him the Rabbit's Foot to maximize our chances of going first. Uh, we're gonna also go ahead and, uh, as you can see, Ness is sitting on almost 400 Psych points. So he's uh, got plenty of uh, healing capacity available. This is, uh, this is Teleport Alpha's R.S. It's the name of this place. Uh, this is Darkonet. We're going to be taking advantage of Teleport Alpha's to avoid. And I hit a spawn there. I tried to get a green there, but no, it wasn't happening. We turned black because we're we're hitting the thing so fast that we're there we're getting friction burned. But yeah, just whenever the teleport, whenever we hit something while we're teleporting, we just uh, ah, just not a good place. Brain shock never works on us because uh, brain shock resistance is tied to uh, hypno resistance. Uh, and as long as we never get hypno resistance, uh, we will have infinite brain. We'll have 99% brain shock resistance. So it's just kind of a wonky uh, programming quirk. Kind of a wonky programming quirk in the game is that uh, hypno and brain shock resistance are actually the same stat, just inverses of each other. Nice teleport there, by the way. That was a really nice teleport. I had no idea I'd even be able to do that. Uh, teleport to uh, Saturn. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much that's the idea. That was a really nice uh, last teleport alpha to go all the way to the meteor like that. A couple of fights, but nothing too bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you the meteorite piece. Yeah, almost went out. That was a, like I said, that was a really good uh, teleport there. <laughs> Kato! So we uh, stay at the end. Now they've uh, finished the phase disorder 2. So this is the point of no return. Here's Star Master, another uh, free, uh, another f uh, free full heal there. And we get Star Storm Omega for the final dungeon. Even though we have 53, I'm still going to pick up the uh, Horn of Life. 
The reason why I'm going to do that is in case I need to revive somebody in battle. Uh, healing Gamma only restores about 15 to 20 percent of your max HP, but uh, uh, Healing Omega. Uh, or sorry, um, what am I trying to say? I, uh, if I if I revive with Healing Gamma, which Ness has, it'll only restore about 20% of your max HP. But with a uh, Omega or with a uh, Horn of Life slash Cup of Life noodles, you'll get a full uh, HP restore. And that can be relevant if I need to revive somebody on Gygus. Particularly on, if I need to revive Paula in Phase 1 if something very bad were to happen. So uh, here we go. Uh, we're about ready to, we're gonna do one last safety save once we get done with this uh, at the uh, phase of sort of three. Just a robot. So it all comes down to geek now. All comes down to Cave of the Past, Yeeg, Porky. <laughs> Jeff has finally ascended to Robot. Like I said, we're, we are going to start with a safety save. Alright. Still has, yeah, still gets to keep his cap. I right, got away. Star a Ghost of Starman is one of the nastiest enemies in the entire game. They will 100% of the time uh, first turn Starstorm Alpha. Alright, I got away second turn. Uh, hip uh, sleep wears off at the end of battle, so that's not too big of a deal. You can get by that guy. You can get by that guy. And didn't get by them. Yeah, another robot eating another sandwich with this robot mouth. I'm not gonna worry about. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about curing uh, that uh, paralysis. Uh, those paralyses until uh, we get to the place. Uh, Ness is immune uh, to paralysis because of the rabbit's foot. And he's got more than enough side points that I can I can totally just work with it. Um, all right, that's the the first and longest room in that room actually went really well. All right, what do we got here? Room two. All right, I got away. That's good. It's always good to see. Oh, that's not that not good. Because now we gotta wait here for, because Pooh clipped the butterfly. That means we gotta wait for the butterfly to fly all the way over the nest. So rip my sandwich time, by the way. That's completely gone. And we got red. That's 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 just that's just kind of poor. All right, at least it's a final star, man. Thank you, Shinzero. Menacing smile. That's a turn waste. Whoa, my gosh, that is a lot of... Yeah, at least Final Storm Man does not first turn Star Storm. And like, holy spawns, Batman. I figured I was gonna I was gonna take one more fight even if I rushed it. So I just went with it, making sure I get a blue at, at worst chance of a green. Uh... All 
eyes. Uh, good. So we're gonna give the rabbit's foot over to you. We're gonna give the sea pendant to you. We're gonna equip you with the night pendant. You get the sea pendant. You get the rabbit's foot. Goods. I'm gonna take a super bomb and I'm going to give that to uh, you. And give you a, another super bomb over there as well. And um, Franklin badge to uh, Paula as well. Uh, right, so. Just check night pendant, magic ant bat, uh, sea pendant, Franklin badge, rabbit's foot, cloak of kings. Okay, good to go. Clink, 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 clink. Um, so we got about twelve or thirty. We sh assuming assuming that uh, we get through the phase one, we will have about thirteen minutes left in the run. Just uh, to give you guys warning as far as uh, the time until time will be at about 12, 13 minutes that we're looking at. Possibly as low as 10, but probably be closer to 12. So we're, so we're looking for Gygus to start with a rocket alpha. We do not want to see rocket beta. So our first turn strategy is going to be this is phase one of, this is phase one of the final boss. Uh, we're gonna put on Psy Shield Sigma. We're gonna fire an MBR at Porky, and we're going to life up you. Alright, beta, that's unfortunate. Uh, thankfully, um... Uh, Pooh should go next, so he'll, he'll life up Paula. Six thirty-three. It's a little on the low side, so this will give us resistance to Gygus throwing those uh, rockets at us. Uh, Prowess is a fifty percent chance to work on Porky, so we're now completely invincible for the rest of Phase One. Uh, goods and the RU. I want to save enough uh, side points for two uh, Rock and Omega, so that's why I went the beta there. Porky can't do anything because he's numb. That was a really low uh, NBR. Uh, uh, super bomb. Uh, multi bottle rocket. Good. Multi bottle rocket. I'm just gonna bash Porky. Like I said, I want to save. All right, there we go. That's phase one. And those are some pretty pathetic uh, MBRs. Normally, we're looking for about 800. 800 to 1,000 is kind of what you're looking for with those MBRs. And thankfully, we did have an extra one. All right, so we're out of phase one. So you can't attack Gygus in phase one. The Devil's Machine will reflect everything back at you. Unless, like, I think, unless you can, like, make him feel strange with a prayer. Like, there's some convoluted ways about it, but, yeah, you're basically. Uh, I'm just gonna bash here. A uh, super bomb. I got a Star Storm Omega, which is about 700 damage. Binary, a little low. Got a turn waste, that's nice. This is a, that would kill off uh, Jeff, so Jeff's have reached it. Jeff has no more purpose in the fight, so we actually want to start getting the non Paula kids to, uh, to, to get KO'd. Alright, that's, that's phase two. And now we got phase three, which is uh, have Paula pray nine times. So uh, pr uh, we're about seven minutes or so away from time. Should be getting like about a four, it looks like about 40 21 or so, in my guess. 421, 420, 
uh, defend, pray, defend, defend. I'm gonna turn waste. Yeah, so Paula is completely immune, is 99% immune to everything Gygus can do, and the other kids don't need to be around anymore. Uh, so Gygus has four things that he can do. He can turn waste, he can flash Omega, he can do what's basically a freeze beta to, you know, freeze alpha to everybody. Uh, or he can do a thunder beta. So the thunder can't hurt her, the flash can't hurt her, the turn waste is, you know, a turn waste. And the freeze does like eight to eight to twelve damage to her because the flat uh, ninety five percent freeze resist with the C pendant. So the only way that Paula can possibly die is if she hit, she gets a whole bunch of solidifies and freezes uh, from Gygus, which is an astronomically low chance of happening. The, the, the fewer kids are around, the, uh, the less uh, less menu time we have. Yeah. So that's prayer two. Seven more prayers to go. All right, so that takes care of uh, Jeff and uh, Pooh. So we're down to our last kid. So uh, Ness will, uh, will bite it uh, after the prayer. Now we're just gonna go D. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, I went there. I went there. That was probably a flash that didn't work. Because of the night pendant, or the sea pendant. Prayer five. So I got uh, four prayers left. Time is going to be as soon as uh, we see our prey for the ninth time. So I, I will let, let you guys know. So this is prayer six. This is a pretty short prayer, and there's three more to go. So as soon as prayer nine starts, uh, as soon as our pray fervently uh, for the ninth time, that's going to be time. So we're, we're about, a, about a minute and a half away. 
minute and a half to two minutes. Turn waste? Okay, that's good. Also, rip stream quality. It's just gonna happen. Yeah, there's no way you're gonna show this on stream without having massive quality de degradation. So, rip for eight. So get ready on time. I'll let you know. As soon as we see it, let's prayer eight. And. Four seventeen. Wow, I was expecting it to be like a, expecting like a four twenty three. That was a really good end game. Oh, four twenty seven. Four twenty seven. Yeah, it's a little bit worse than I would have liked. There's a lot of safety saves. So uh, just let me know what you want. If you want, if I, if, uh, if you need some time to set things up, uh, I can do. I got a couple things I can do to uh, buy some time. Um, so I'll just until I, until I'm notified, it's time to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. I've got a couple things I got I can show off. Yeah. Looks like uh, looks like I'm gonna go ahead and cut uh, here. There's not really th anything else, but since uh, since we've gotten some uh, since we are we were a little bit a uh, little bit behind, I know we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call the stream here. So uh, be back on Sunday, uh, roughly the same time when I'm gonna do the Gaia Two Dual Saga. Uh, for the same event, same same time, roughly same place. Um, until then, um, that's I'm Dr. Sky, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off. Uh, thanks, for everybody, for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed the run. And uh, as always, I will uh, try to do better next time. So we got the next run, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, kill the stream now so we can uh, go and transition to the next runner. Thanks, guys, once again.